Right, folks, welcome back to this week's Brew Time. And this week, we've got Michael, the Gorilla Biker. How you doing, bud? Good, yeah. How are you? Oh, grand. Grand. Very good. Thank you. Very good. Um, Dude, I think, uh, I know you've listened to a couple of these before, so you know the crack. Well, um, first off, what's your tipple? What's your tipple of choice? Uh, Guinness today. I'm actually nearly nearly out of everything in the house. Fancy that, an Irishman drinking a Guinness. (laughs) I have got my my lovely wife, Mrs. Teapot, bought me the best advent calendar in the world. Oh, no it's way. a brew dog. <laughs> she bought me a brew dog advent calendar, and this is Lost in Mango. Nice. Very nice. Is it, well, we'll find out as a good, I suppose. <laughs> we'll find out in a second. So um, here's to your health, pal. Slange. Cheers. Or slange. <laughs> I do think it's interesting the way so many words in Scottish and Irish are quite similar. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's Irish Gaelic, Scottish Gaelic, and then everything else in between, isn't there? Yeah. <laughs> that is an interesting taste. Good, interesting. I think, I like it. <laughs> I think, I think it's a good, yeah, I think it's yeah, yeah. good. There's a definite mango sort of aftertaste to it. I think it's, I think I'll have to have another little slip. Right, sit, hang on. It's the smell. The smell smells like an off fart, but when you drink it, it's actually quite nice. Quite an off fart. What does a good smelling fart smell like? Uh, I don't know. Well, <laughs> I could go into detail, but we won't. We won't. It depends who's farted, I suppose. Yes, it's it? too early in the podcast. We're we'll, we'll going to. We'll We're going to find out a lot about you in this one. I think. <laughs> Dude, right. Um, before we crack on with questions. Can I throw the floor open to you like I normally do? What's your name? Where'd you come from? What you do? Just introduce yourself and we'll go from there. How about that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so my name is Michael. I'm from Kilkenny, which is also currently where I live again. I've kind of lived in a few places all over Ireland. Never any other country yet, though. Uh, and I am, um, I suppose, I would like to say primarily a motorbike human person, but really I'm primarily a mechanical engineer, uh, sadly working for... Um, what would you call them? Corporations. If my boss is listening to this, please don't fire me for saying that. Um, but also, uh, yeah, I suppose then I just make videos on YouTube of bikes and about bikes and with bike people and doing stuff on bikes and etc. <laughs> the key, the key feature being bikes. Bikes are pretty much involved in it. I was watching your. Um, uh, it was one of the suspension ones. It's quite a recent bid. Um, is that with, is it Sean? Is that right? Was it Sean or Dean? Oh, Dean, Dean, Dean. yeah, Dean from Automax Suspension, yeah, yeah. You you were doing you were doing some um, refurbishment of the of the forks. That was funny, man. That was uh, <laughs> I, I enjoyed that. You you probably know what this is like. Um, it, it, generally, when I'm editing videos, it's just me. So you know, you're editing, and you're like, I just I know the story I want to tell. I just want to kind of get it done because I'm sick of listening to myself. That was yeah. uh, that was actually one that was really fun to edit because i mean that was like well over an hour and most of it was just back and forth abuse so to Crack, seeing like yeah. oh, i don't want to cut that out because it's funny <laughs> but, no, yeah yeah so that was actually enjoyable to edit which was which was nice it's hard isn't it when you edit when i've said this before on on here that when you're editing you know you know what you felt like and what went on at that time when you filmed it and you want to try and convey as much of that as possible. And it's really hard to cut, cut sufficient out that the piece still has momentum and it keeps people engaged, but it also tells the real story. And that's, that's definitely something I still struggle with now. Like I I, I, I think it's impossible not to. (laughs) Oh, it's like you look at you look at people like like Casey Neistat. He's a prime example for me. Casey Neistat, Peter McKinnon, mostly Casey, I would say, because his mm. much shorter. His were always his vids tend to be well under ten minutes. Yep. And I I always look and think, how the hell have you told that story as conclusively as he does, but in like six minutes, seven minutes? I, I think it's something that if you if you have an interest in making videos and you've seen his videos, that exact same thought has come to my head because it, it, when you watch his videos and uh, for any apologies for anyone who's never seen his videos, but if you watch his videos, you're like, I, I don't know, I come away from them like, right, that felt so much longer, but it never mm. felt uninteresting. Be, just yeah. like you said, it's just so dense with storytelling pieces. It's like, yeah. wow, <laughs> how would you do that? Yeah. Whereas I spend about five minutes to say hello, so... <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm I'm the same. Yeah, yeah, and I've I've definitely noticed 
particularly doing this podcast and going back in, I don't really edit the podcast, but I have to listen to it all just to, just to just, make sure, yeah, you know, yeah. and, um, I definitely I'm well aware that I have verbal diarrhea way more than I ever thought I did before. And it's like, ah, oh, shit, I need to rather than use 23 words, use two. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I was, I was the same when I started making the videos. I realized like, Christ, I say, uh, yeah, so yeah, much. Yeah. <laughs> like when I started doing it, I was like, okay, I have to make two and a half thousand cuts in this first five minutes. And it's all me just going like, uh, yeah, yeah, so yeah, I think right. I've actually removed that from my general life as well because of it, which is a good thing, which is a good thing. Mm. Yeah, M- makes you think a little bit more about what you're saying rather than just blah, blapping it yeah. out, doesn't it? <laughs> so uh, how long have you been making vids then? How long have you been doing this? Um, it's actually, when I, I can't remember the date exactly. They were written down somewhere because I just like wrote it down for myself. But it's in, in January, uh, it'll be three years. So mm. that's, it's a... Uh, it was funny because someone, someone, um, one of my friends said to me recently, he was like, uh, you know, how, how long have you been making videos? And I said, oh, it's three years next year. And he said, and you're 30 next year, right? And I said, yeah, I'm 30 next year. And he said, uh, so you've been making videos for more than 10% of your life. And I was like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> It's great that having is, mates like that, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It just it takes you back and like, whoa, that's uh, that's quite a long time, actually. <laughs> <laughs> And um, where are you at just now? What sort of subs are you? I mean, subs aren't everything. I appreciate that. Where, what's, what's your channel at at the moment? I just crossed 5,000 subscribers, which was, um, I'll be i will be honest, right? I don't know. Like, obviously, people who do watch my channel that will probably know. Like, I just, I just, most of my videos are me just going out talking about something that literally piqued mm. my interest. And I never, ever, ever thought in a billion years I would hit you know, 1,000, let alone 5,000. And that's come about like insanely quick. Um, yeah. I had like a thought at the start of the year in my head. You know, when you're like, I can't remember what it was at the start of the year, but it wasn't, I I, I don't even know, is it 3,000? And I was like, wouldn't it be amazing if I got to 5,000 before Christmas? Yeah. And I crossed that yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Few, I was like, whoa. <laughs> so like the stretch, stretch goal was 5,000 and I got there. So it's a bit mad. I, I, I don't think I don't think anyone that's not involved with YouTube. I don't think people realize how tough it is to get that first thousand. I mean, it. Oh yeah. It it literally feels like a never ending slog to get the first <laughs> thousand, doesn't it? it? Just I think I was about seven years, six seven years, and then I wasn't posting all the time, but I did. I, mm. I'll mention it. I did the trip. I still only had six hundred <laughs> odd. 600 odd so- subs at the end of that and it, it you know took the, till 2016 you know the way you get stick for mentioning that yeah like i don't know why if that was every time you said i'm like yeah you're dead right you did you did <laughs> ride around the world in the jigs or thousand and whenever i mentioned like he rode around the world in the jigs or thousand people and there i was like whoa he's you, clearly insane but fair play <laughs> do you know why i get stick for it it's because it's because I make a big deal about it. No, no one's ever said to me, "Oh God, you talk about that a lot." I'm just, <laughs> I just don't want to be the one that goes, "Oh, you know." And another time at band camp, I, I, so I sort of play on it like the off road thing. Uh, you yeah, know, yeah, I, yeah. I don't mind off roading. I'm just shit at it. But I, I always make a big deal about it, and I make a big deal about the trip. And obviously, people, people jump on it, don't they? And, it's become a thing now. Yeah, <laughs> it's my own fault. It's my own fault, um, folks. It's an absolute travesty. If you enjoy my vids, you're going to love Michael's. So please head to the Gorilla Biker <laughs> and give the lad a little uh, sub- subscribe, subscription, follow, you're like. Send, you're send you know what mad you're disappointment. <laughs> <laughs> Ding dong, the old bell. Uh, He's a big chap much. like me. He's Celtic with a good crack, probably better than mine, I'd suggest. And he actually knows what he's doing with the spanners as well and can ride uh, a bike. Okay, Follow the guy. <laughs> <laughs> More than I do, mate, I tell you that. <laughs> I know which way the front of the bike is because that's the bit that tends to take me into dangerous things. Uh, sure that's look. All, that's all of us. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, shall we crack on with questions? Because I'm well aware that any questions I'll have, people have probably asked them already anyway. So absolutely. See how it how it uh, I'm, I'm takes really us interested from there. to see what people asked, actually. <laughs> you might <laughs> regret that. There's one there's I know there's one question I answered. I I responded to the guy you asked on Instagram. The only reason I did that was because I saw it and I was like, ha, I do remember that. It popped up on my notifications. Like, I hope 
Bruce doesn't think that guy's being really rude. So I was like, <laughs> I, I'm just going to reply so he knows that I know there's a joke there and it's fine. <laughs> no worries. Instagram is about the only ones where I actually ever get a pre-read of the questions because, as you said, it notifies you all the time, notifies, doesn't it? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. But Patreon and stuff, I, I tend, and Facebook, I don't often um, pre-read anything. So, first off, we'll go to Patreon, patreon.com forward slash teapot1 to the clan. First question. Well, the first question was from a, a new clan member, Simon Orm, who asked where he left the questions. And Simon, I can't find where you've left the question, mate. Um, so I don't know if you did. Apologies if you did, but it's not here in the comments. So, first one, Mark, Mark Fulcher. Oh, God, let's see what he asks. <laughs> Help me, ducks. So a couple of questions for you both tonight, just for shits and giggles. What's your best Englishman, Irishman, Scotsman joke? Oh, no. I'm crap at this. I actually have one. Go on, let's see <laughs> There's, it. Only, let's there's see only one. There's only one I ever use because a lot of them, a lot of those jokes generally make Irish people out to be idiots. So I just can't retell really them because you're like, ah, ah. <laughs> You know, it's a bit awkward, but there's one there's one that's beautiful, and I'm going to apologize because this is going to make probably some people like go uh, shake their fists at me. Um, so an Irishman, a Welshman, an Englishman, and a Scotsman are on a plane, and the captain says, Plane's too heavy, you know, someone needs to, to get off. So brave Scotsman says, For the glory of Scotland, jumps off the plane. Captain says, No, nah, plane's still too heavy. Brave Welshman says, For the glory of Wales, jumps off the plane. No, nah, still too heavy. Irishman says, for the glory of Ireland, and throws the Englishman off the plane. <laughs> it's the only one I know. <laughs> it's the only one you need. Awesome. Um, brilliant. I can't well, believe about, someone asked that. That's brilliant. It's about Englishman, Irishman, Scottish, Welsh. Those jokes, they're about the only racist jokes you're allowed these days, isn't it? If you take the piss, 100%. Of English, Irish, Scottish, or Welsh, perfectly fine. I get called sweaty. I get called every name under the sun, but it's fine because I'm Scottish. It's fine. There's, there's, a, there's another good one I know about Scotsman, actually. It's uh, how copper wire was invented. <laughs> Go on. Two Scotsmen fighting over a penny. <laughs> I apologize. Right, yeah. folks, that was my call. Uh, see you later. Cheers now. Hey, good luck. <laughs> Uh, Mark, I genuinely, mate, I cannot think of uh, of a joke at the moment. I'll I'll try and rack my brains as we're talking. And he, he just he, he has loads. He just doesn't want to say them. <laughs> <laughs> None that will beat that. Uh, Mark also says, "I'm just away on holiday down in Cornwall, and I'm pleasantly surprised at how courteous the drivers are. Generous waves and thumbs up, etc. Down the tight country lanes. Is this really that much of a lost art? I know around my way we're still very much nodders, but." Do we need to campaign to bring back the nod? Yes. Yes. I'm I'm nodding. Yes, we do. Yeah, 100%. It, there definitely is a, not as much nodding as there used to be, I think. Uh, it's it's a funny one because obviously I, I travel a good distance up and down to work every day. Most of the time on the bike, a uh, good 90% of the time. And it's, it's something that's funny. Every single day I meet a guy who goes past me on an R6. And every single day, the two of us will be like, how are you getting yeah. on? There's one guy, um, and it's funny because I'm pretty certain he actually watches my channel. And I'm pretty certain he comments quite a bit because I do recognize his helmet from his profile picture. And there's not that many people who own a brand new Tri Triumph Rocket 3 in Ireland. Right. And I mean, I've literally went so far as to nearly put my two legs, two hands out and give him a full, <laughs> you know, like, hey, wave. No, nah, not a blink from him. And there's two wow. guys on, and I apologize in advance, GSs. And I mean, they won't even acknowledge that you're looking at them. They're just dead straight ahead. And yeah, I'm off to do yeah. my business. Just, just, never just, got just nod, just nod. It's crazy. Yeah. I've never got the snobbery on bikes, you know, like sports no. bikes only wave to sport sports bikes, GS wankers only wave to GS, Harleys wave to nobody unless they're Harleys. I've never got any of that. And I I definitely noticed going from the Jixa onto a, a GS, how little people actually will nod or wave back. And I, I, I like you, I'm like nodding yeah, yeah. all the time at no. people. <laughs> you, know, you really have to make an effort, don't you? And I think people yeah. are doing it. But that down, down in the southeast, I don't think it's anywhere near as as prevalent. Certainly, once you head north, it's mm. it's still alive and well up there for sure. But down here, nah. 
No. I would agree. When we when we were in Scotland recently, we got mostly, I would say, 80, 90 percent of nods and waves were were mm. replied to. Um, yeah, so I, I'd agree with the northern parts were I, now I've never ridden in the southern parts, so you know it's completely skewed. But yeah, up there definitely. I do think traffic has probably got a, a factor of on that, and as in there's so much traffic down here, people are just like focused on the road a lot of the mm. t- you know people people tend to look as far as the front wheel a lot of the time mm-hmm. when when there's a lot of traffic round about and i think people's vision maybe isn't up and looking at everything else round about they're just looking at what's going to kill them next down here yeah, well, yeah that's fair enough too like i mean i suppose if you think about it a lot of people might not ride all of the time maybe maybe they're just commuters so like that maybe they are super focused on i don't want to die here today so i'm just gonna Look in mm. that little narrow alley of vision, which is, I mean, that's fair enough. Yeah, yeah. Maybe there's a vid in this. Bring back the nod. Maybe we should yes. start a campaign. I, I agree. I do. Maybe people don't know. And you know, all those little symbols like tap the helmet for um, yeah, yeah. policy and ex- uh, all that stuff. So it's, uh, <laughs> there's, there's a lot of people don't know that because there was a guy actually once I went past him. And I mean, there was actually, there was, uh, I don't know, do you, do you have more? We've, we've customs cops here uh-huh. and they're like they i don't know some so, someone in there who trains everyone actually when they got recruited i think they told them they actually have the power of of um god poseidon himself because i mean they just they're just so rude uh all of the time but there was the and hit them customs customs cop checking for to actually check for uh you know, English red cars that haven't been VRT yet because, you know, God help the government losing a few hundred euro. Um, and there was a normal cop with the speed gun out. So I was, I tapped the helmet and your man like threw up his hand and I tapped it again. He threw up his hand like this and he actually turned and followed me down the road. So I pulled in, he's like, what, what were you doing? I was like, oh, it's this guard's down the road. And he had the yeah. clue. Now he's, he was younger than me. Um, so fair yeah. enough. And I think you, you need to know, like who tells you these things, I suppose. You know what I mean? Where do you learn them point. If, you, if you don't have a group of, of older bikers who you know. Michael, there's a vid here. Biker etiquette. You heard it here first. <laughs> Michael and I are going to do, a, one of us will do a vid on this. If anyone or, else or does boat. one before we do, <laughs> you've, you've copied us. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. No, that's Stealing definitely ideas. a vid, isn't it? Biker right. etiquette. It's definitely yeah. a vid. 100%. Uh, it'd be very um, interesting to see, actually, do you cover everything I'd cover or vice versa? Because hmm. I, I yeah, wonder yeah, what's yeah. missing between our collective knowledge. Good point. Tell you what, folks, if you're listening to the, well, not if you're listening to the podcast, if you're watching the podcast vid now, leave something in the comments about like what what is a, a sort of hand signal that you know of. Like, how do you say hello? Do you nod? Do you wave? Do you stick your boot out? Um, how do you warn about old Bill? How do you warn about hazards? All that sort of stuff. Let us know in the comments and um, we could do some sort of vid on it. Yep, absolutely. I'm coming to Ireland. We could do it when I come to Ireland. I'm when you come to Ireland, um, next year, definitely. I'm I'm coming. It's Excellent. I've been meaning to do it for the last couple of years, and some some something some, beginning some with C has got yeah. in the way. So um, gets in the way last yeah, things. next year, bugger it, I'm coming. Even if I've got to swim and drag me bike, I'm coming. <laughs> See ya. Um, route, route, route yourself through Northern Ireland. It's uh, that's that's how I got to Scotland. No one checks anything. <laughs> All received. Liking that, right? Yeah. All received. Uh, right. Last one from Fulch. He says, "Lastly, best pint of Guinness in Ireland." Oh. He says his is the Hideaway in Loch Gowna. Loch Gowna. That's um, that's Longford, I think. So I must go up there. I've never been. I don't know the Hideaway, but I must go up there. Um. Oh, best pint. That's a tough question. I've had many points again this in many places. Where's the best? Uh, I'm going to keep it local and I'm going to say Clear's Pub in Kilkenny. They do a fantastic point again this and I'm actually going in there on the 23rd for my uh, Christmas points with my friends. So yeah, Clear's, Clear's Pub in Kilkenny. It's, and if you, if you like, like live music, they obviously when that thing that we were talking about there that we won't talk about is uh, around, they, they usually you'll have tra- uh, you know trad sessions and stuff like that in the corner or something awesome. so it's a great it's a great little pub I, lo- I love that over in Ireland in particular you still get it in parts of Scotland but nowhere near as prevalent as, as Ireland I love it when you walk into a boozer and it's just someone playing a fiddle someone playing a guitar just brilliant, cracking yeah. on brilliant and, and I brilliant. hope they haven't I hope they haven't killed it because it's one of those things that uh, look uh, we won't uh, <laughs> we won't talk about it but it's mm. it's one of those things that has kind of been stopped for really no logical reason I can see is live music is not allowed to be played mm. 
which I don't understand but I really hope that it does make a full comeback because I, I personally love it um, and I, I I completely and utterly lack musical talent um, <laughs> you know I, I, all of actually I lack most talents to be honest I can't really cook or anything <laughs> either but the only thing I can do is fix mechanical things that's all I was born with but uh, there's a couple of my friends who would be really talented musicians and um, yeah. I know I know they'd love to get back to it so hopefully it picks back up I don't know if, if you've watched Richie V does. He's he did a tour of the Wild Atlantic. I way. watched my, yeah, very good. And obviously he's I hate him, but I don't. I love you, Rich, but <laughs> I hate the bloke because he's so talented musically. You know, he's, and, he's ridiculous. <laughs> it's not. He just can just walk in somewhere, pick up an instrument, and start playing. I just, I hate him. I hate him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I I understand what you mean though, because you're like, wow, you're so good, but. God, I hate you because you're so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love. I would love to be like that, but yeah, nah. <laughs> yeah, nah. me too. But nah, it's, it's not in my bones. So you know, <laughs> anyone, anyone that was at this year's Wild Bad Weekend uh, heard, that heard me sing 500 miles, you'll know I'm not musical. <laughs> um, what was I going to say there? I was going to say something about. Oh yeah, how are things over there in terms of? COVID, you know, is are, are things back to any semblance of normality or? Uh, they are and they aren't. I mean, obviously, it's it's. I think it's the same as ever. It's going a bit worse again now. Uh, again, again, going a bit worse. So things are kind of quieting down. To be honest, and I know this probably isn't the best way to put it, I tend to just ignore it as much as I can and go around, go about my daily life as normal as I can. Same. But yeah, it's definitely... Um, the, the effect what like a big problem for me which was which was really annoying was i was actually i was i had to go to the states for work in june um mm. which obviously was not the best time to travel and because at the time it was predicted i'd get i don't know vaccinated in like mid 2023 in ireland so I, they they were offering them i got vaccinated in the car park of a piggly wiggly in North Carolina, and that is the right. truth, right? By an army man, very nice guy. Uh, thanks for that. But the reason I did it was because if I didn't do that when I came back to Ireland, I would have to stay in a hotel room for two weeks, which just was not yeah, happening. Yeah. So I was like, look, you could stick pure acid in my veins. And I, I, yeah. at that point, I'd be like, no hotel rooms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, just, just to completely avoid the argument, because I know there's a lot of foreign against, and I just stay clear of it because I just, I, I don't mm. care enough, to be honest. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. I just like, whatever. But um, when I came back then, obviously I had a, an American um, card thing and then I couldn't get the EU one, so I couldn't do anything. So I was just like completely in the middle of everything. And even, you know, you ring the helpline and they're like, yeah, no, like we, we get your point, but but also no, you can't do all the things. <laughs> so that it's just was insane. Annoying. Just it's mental, been... completely mental. Yeah, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't want to get bogged down in this, but that's purely... I've got a fair amount of contempt for it all now because there's just no logic. There's zero agree. logic yeah. in any of this anymore at all. If, if it was logical and they could back it up with science and, and actual science and results, mm. then I would I would play the game. But now I'm, I've been double jabbed. I'm not convinced I'm going to go booster. The only reason I got double jabbed was was to travel. And mm-hmm. um, now it's like, well, how often are we going to have to do this? Have you listened to the Joe Rogan, the latest Joe Rogan podcast with Dr. Wait. Peter McCulloch? I'm actually halfway through it, yeah. <laughs> so, what do you think? Uh, it's, uh, it's just one of those things that it's like, surely, surely not. You know what I mean? When you're listening to it, you're like, I don't, I'd hate using the terms, but you're like, am I, am I insane? Like listening mm-hmm. to this and being like, well, hold on, hold on a second, you know. But it's it. I I'm actually I try to listen to as broad base of stuff as I can. Same. Like that's I think that's how you get a really healthy picture of current world things, and um, mm. because obviously if you just focus in on one side or the other of any argument, you do tend to miss a lot. Um, it's tainted, but, isn't it? It's it's tainted. It is. uh, abso- you can't just have absolutely. one side of an argument. Yeah, yeah. No. No, you just can't. But yeah, listening to him is um I, I don't know, it's 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 uh it's strange, isn't it? It's if mm. if even half of what he's saying is true, it's like yeah. what? How it's is infuriating. It, how is this it's I mean, really, really annoying, yeah. Yeah. Uh, folks, all I can say to you is please listen to the Joe Rogan podcast with Peter McCulloch, listen to what the man says. 
and make your own mind up. That's yep. all I've got to say. Best right, way, let's draw a discreet <laughs> veil under that now because I can feel my blood rising. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> good, good card, good card. We'll crack on with some questions. Charlie <laughs> Callard. Charlie, how you doing, pal? Evening, gents. Question one. So you're having a movie made about you. Who is cast to be the role of you? Cracking question. Oof. Cool, blimey. Cool. Who's going first? <laughs> Oh, crikey. Um, uh, who would play me? Uh, I'm really bad at names as well. So, like, even, I know. If, I, even if I picture an actor, I'm like, <laughs> what's his name? <laughs> I'd want to say Brad Pitt, but mine's more like, um, oh, Brad, Brad Pitt on stilts for you, I think. <laughs> no, no, no. Brad Pitt after he's been to Greg's for about a month and a half. <laughs> um, I'd love to say The Rock, but uh, it's because it make because I love him, but it makes no sense. He's and he'd, awesome, and he'd probably do a terrible Irish accent. <laughs> <laughs> and he's shorter than me, so it just wouldn't work. Well, yeah, because you're a big old lump. What are you six five, six seven? <laughs> you're six seven. Too tall is the answer. Too tall. Wow, yeah. was that? trying to buy clothes and whatnot is um, challenging. <laughs> yeah, we'll go with The Rock just because he's a legend, uh, all around, all around legend. <laughs> <laughs> Even though he's not a that you want to blow your own trumpet or anything, you know. But nah. yeah, the rock. Uh, well, he um, he's an all around legend, so he might make me look good. I'm most certainly right. not. <laughs> Got you. Got you. Um, I think I think uh, for me, I like. Oh, what's the guy from King of Queens? The American comedian from King of Queens. Oh, I know who you're talking about. What's his name? I Kevin know. something. Is it Kevin? Mm, I I'm so bad with names. I'm not sure. I know the guy you're talking about, but I, he was I, in I, Hitch and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, because he's 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 a large chap. Um, mind you, he's funny. American. I don't know. You any, see again with any... the accents. That's the thing. Yeah, he's going to butcher your accent. <laughs> yeah, he is. I'm trying to think of a Scottish guy that's that's physically physically. What's the word? A fat Scottish geezer. I'm trying to think of a fat Scotch, <laughs> uh, fat Scotsman. Man, how, uh, like, actor. You can't call yourself fat anymore. You could like probably roll from Scotland to China. I'm fat. Point. There's no hiding it. I'm fat. <laughs> you know what I mean? I accept that. Um, I yeah, but there's, any... there's 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 well insulated and fit, <laughs> and there's fat. There's the big difference. I'm not even fit anymore. I used to be fit. Genuinely, I used to be a fit fat guy, and now I'm just a fat guy. <laughs> Are you, are, you, are, you, are you still doing the rowing? No, no. Oh. I've I've not rowed properly since I would say probably end of April was the last time I properly was rowing like five days a week, and then mm. it, it it drastically drifted away when we got the do- we got a dog end of May, and I mean I'm walking. I walk I walk the, the pup at least mm. once a day, if not twice a day. Um, so I'm still doing that, but I'm not. I'm not rowing. Fair enough. This is bugging me, um, Charlie. I can't think of a. I can't think of a fat. Oh, no, no, Google Scottish, Scottish actor. actors. Scottish male fat actors. Scottish actors. <laughs> not, it can't be sexist. Maybe fat. there's a fat female Scottish actress. Act- we, we, could, we could feed up actors. James McAvoy. <laughs> now he's a bit of a legend. I've, I've, I I mm. know a few people personally in the bike industry who've met him because apparently oh, really? he's into his bikes, and they've all said he's a really genuine, nice guy. There you go. So we just feed him up, put him on stilts, and he's you. There we go, James. If you're listening, or if anyone knows James and they're listening, um, tell him there's a job for him if he wants it. I'm actually going to see see Irish male actors because I probably like The Rock. Probably it's just not going to work out with the name. I like Killian I Murphy, like Gerard no, Butler as well. Far too good looking. Um, yeah. Chris O'Dowd. We'll go. Chris O'Dowd could probably play me. Who's that? Who's Chris O'Dowd? It it crowd. I'm old. I haven't watched it. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what else he's saying to me. Honestly. I don't know the <laughs> crowd. <laughs> Sorry, Chris. Hold on. We'll find out. Hold on. <laughs> Sorry, Chris. Uh, ooh, recently, he's in <laughs> nothing I've watched. <laughs> so maybe, this is maybe, like maybe having my own it. Jamie. This is great. We should do this every week. You're yeah, just on no, Google. No Brilliant. problem. Maybe, <laughs> maybe he's a, uh, yeah, maybe. There you go. He definitely accepted role as me because he's he's clearly in decline. <laughs> <laughs> he needs a job. Sorry, 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 Chris. Sorry, I'm only joking. 
<laughs> right, question two. <laughs> Seems we've just blown that. You, you have coffee, beer, and fuel. Which do you have a lifetime supply of, and which do you keep, and which one is lost forever? Okay, coffee, beer, and fuel. Which one is a lifetime supply? Which one do you keep, and which one is lost forever? Mm, well, I think lifetime supply has to be fuel, doesn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Of the other two, though, that's a that's a mean question. Beer and coffee. I don't know. I don't know. Could I survive without coffee? Is the problem? Yeah, I'd have to keep coffee and lose beer. I think I'm the same. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't think I'd survive without coffee. I love See, my I, coffee. Everyone thinks I'm a raving alky because every time <laughs> I do the podcast, I'm drinking a beer. But I mean, this is literally the only. Well. This is the only sort of regular time I have a beer is two, three cans when I do a podcast once a week. Yeah, that's pretty fair. The rest fair. of the time, I, I don't drink. Honest. I very rarely drink myself, so it'd, yeah, it'd have to be coffee I'd keep. Sorry to disappoint just, everybody with the stereotypical Irishman. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just thinking. I'm just thinking because I know people will be going, hang on, what about... Yeah, and when I'm away on a bike trip, the evenings, I'll have a beer. Yeah, so social stuff and trips. Yeah, I'll have a beer though. in the evening, but normal it, it, life no. in moderation. It's fine, Bruce. You're not an alcoholic. It's not moderation. I proper <laughs> knock it back. <laughs> Mind you, everyone else that's with me drinks a lot, so it's not just me. If everyone else is doing it, surely it's okay. <laughs> if we're all crack. alcoholics, none of us are alcoholics. That's exactly. how it works. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, the bolt hole biker. Evening, chaps. Firstly, what do you think the percentage chances are of the two of you both fitting into a Fiat 500? Not a hope in hell. Not of your you'd be, six, you'd seven. be surprised. You'd be. Um, actually, also number one, uh, Bolthall Biker has a great channel himself. He's a he's a patron of mine. He's um, he's a he's a very nice dude. Uh, but uh, interesting seeing him there. But uh, uh, hello, by the way. And um, what else? Yeah, no, you'd be surprised. I rented a Fiat 500 years ago now. Um, which broke my soul actually, because myself and, and the missus went over to um, Spain uh, all around Tarragona, and I don't know if you've ever been to Tarragona, but that's where the Tarragona Rally is. Like they have some unbelievable right. roads over there, like down past like a castle on a cliff, Miravet and stuff like that. And anyway, we rented a car because she had never been on a bike with me at that point, and uh, it was a Fiat 500. And actually, they're quite spacious. I think me and you would fit just fine. The car might struggle, the suspension might break, but I would give it a 100 percent chance. I can't believe. Are you sure it was a Fiat 500 and not like the Grande Fiat 500? No, it was just a standard Fiat 500. My wife and I went to a friend's <laughs> wedding down in France, and we had the same thing. When we got when we arrived at the airport, we were given a Fiat 500 as the the loan car, and my my missus is not a big woman, <laughs> and, and there just was no room. I mean, I was literally like this trying to drive this car. I never said we'd be comfortable. It's <laughs> <laughs> an important clarification. Yeah, if if um if herself wasn't small, like her, my elbows were, yeah, like that. You're just kind of you're in yeah, their yeah, space, yeah. but you could drive it. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> if you do come to Ireland, they'll have to find someone to volunteer if you had five hundred for a sport right, fitting. To... <laughs> right. There's another video in that, isn't there? Um, <laughs> yeah, just second question. Have my kid in and out. Exactly, a crowbar. I enjoyed <laughs> watching your Scotland trip recently. Any plans to get yourself back to Blighty, but maybe venturing a bit further south? Not too far. We've got some awesome riding roads in the north of England and can even arrange for rain to make you feel a bit more at home if you'd like. <laughs> you can leave off the rain. I don't need more of that. That's fine. Um, uh, yes, yes. I would love to get back over, to be honest. Um, I'd love to go to Scotland for longer. And also because of the likes of yourself and Richie Veed and whatnot, uh, the Peak District, I'd love to go there, um, right all around that area. Uh, it looks stunning. Um, obviously, Wales, I'd love to get to Wales as well. So, yeah, yeah definitely, it's, it's it's on the cards, provided my my life lets me and whatnot. Absolutely, I'd love to get back over. Because really, it's it's actually a very short ferry hop. And I mean, the ferry to Scotland is very cheap as well. So it's, I suppose, it's just, it, I think a lot of those things are just a really, they're really a case of just saying, right, I'm going on that day and that's mm -hmm. it and just go um, because yeah. otherwise you won't. And uh, I'm glad to hear you enjoyed the Scotland trip as well. I absolutely loved it. It was brilliant. How long were you over? Was it three days? Is that right? Am I right in thinking it was three days? We, I'm trying to think now myself. No, it was, it was four days total, I think. Four. 
four four four, four nights for four nights reason. five mm. maybe five maybe five. Oh, okay all right for over five days i think it was four nights yeah four nights what's your what was your have you got a favorite part of it ah uh, yeah uh, you'd it, like to do again yeah K- cairn cairn gorms national mm-hmm. park all those mm-hmm. roads around there um yeah, i'd love to it. do the isle of sky again because the day we were out on the isle of sky it was it, like it got so so cold it was it was raining sure the whole way, but it it I mean it got really cold out there. Really, really cold. Yeah. So I'd love to experience that with some not even it doesn't have to be dry, but maybe like ten degree weather would be fine. Just it was so cold. <laughs> summer. God, I remember that. It was about ninety five it hit ten degrees. It was <laughs> God, what a summer. Great day. Yeah. Um Sky is a beautiful place, man. A lot of people say it's Scotland in miniature because it's it's almost got parts of the whole of scotland all in that one wee island it's just it's stunning God, oh, it's gorgeous and like we we when we rode out there it was like i said it was lashing rain but just the mm. views i i said it i said it on the video i think i said it to the guys who i was with i actually think the rain added a bit to it because all the, the like the peaks and stuff you come past and i'm not sure what the island is across the way from it um with the mountains on it like i, I think it's our, is it the Hebr- hebrides Hebrides. Hebrides. The start of the Hebrides, yeah. Yeah, you can see them in the distance and you could just see the rain clouds just drifting across them. It was just like, ah, it was such an experience. I absolutely loved Scotland. Um, yeah. I'm I'm surprised you don't live up there again, to be honest, other than the rain, but it's just, well, what a place. <laughs> yeah, I've often I've often questioned why I came down this neck of the woods, I've got to say. <laughs> Following off, my wife, my wife, once she... Once she retires, once she finishes in the old bill, she she wants to retire back up to Scotland. Hopefully with me, um, but yeah, yeah, she would she would like to head up that way. She loves it up there. Yeah, and the roads are really good too, like <clears throat> surface ways. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a great place. Uh, there's there's quite a few there's quite a few sort of beautiful parts of of the UK and what I've seen of Ireland so far, and. Um, I, th- I think a lot of the time we're in this quest, aren't we, to to travel abroad to try and find these stunning places. And a lot of the time, it's right there on our doorstep. You know, mm. there's, there's stunning places right here on this wee island. Yeah, <clears throat> agreed. Anyway. anyway. <laughs> Just avoid um, cities. Avoid <clears throat> cities. That's all I ever say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't come to London. Just don't come yeah. to London. <laughs> Uh, right, next one. Crazy legs on a bike. How you doing, Jake? My question. You clearly are mechanically minded, but when putting vlogs out showing how to and rebuilds, do you ever get challenged in YouTube comments or receive negative comments? If so, how do you deal with it? No way. Who gets negative comments on YouTube? No one. No one. Uh, um, well, no, number one, I'm glad I come across as mechanically minded. <laughs> My <laughs> boss would be delighted. Maybe he won't fire me after all. Um, no, the... Uh, yes, I suppose with the comments, the comments thing, I, I try to remember the whole question in my head, but uh, the comments, y- yes, I do. I mean... Uh, Yes and no. I've actually, strangely enough, I've never had like uh, a complete and utter bad comment on one of the, the mechanical videos because I'm very clear on those that I am not a qualified mechanic. You're if if you want to follow along the video and see what I'm doing, it's very much a look. This is how I'm doing it from my bike mm-hmm. in my way. Yeah, I'm not yeah. telling you this is the best way to do it. I'm not saying this is the service manual A to Z to do it. Um, and I think I think people do appreciate that as well. I, I hope. Um, and actually, oftentimes it's it, look. There have been negative comments, obviously, yes. And there's been, you know, ob- comments that are like, "Well, I saw you use this type of grease to reseat, oh, you yeah, know, yeah. your brake pistons, but you should use this one. That's what I use." And it's like, yeah, well, both are correct. So, in a way, yeah. But actually, when I was when I was refreshing the Jixer at the time, um, there was a there was a guy um, from London actually, and he said he used to work with Suzuki for 25 years. And uh, he he messaged me privately and said, "You're doing a great job, but I'll keep an eye out for you in case I see you do anything terribly wrong." Which I really uh, appreciated. That was really yeah, nice yeah, to yeah, have. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was just a nice little backup. And at the end <clears> of it, when I started up, he just messaged me and he said, "No, nah, look good, well done." I'm like, ha, ah, sweet. So Happy days. yeah, not 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 on actually on the mechanical videos. Now that I think of it, no, generally they're positive just sometimes people have a difference of opinion on you know the method say <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah 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 that's your um that's your s rad isn't it your s rad mm-hmm. 750 i nice. love that bike i love that bike 
so is much. Is that the one? Is that the one that had the little mishap at the track? Yeah, yeah. It Go is. on, <laughs> tell us all about it. Tell us all, mate. I've crashed enough jigsaws. So you know it happens. Uh, yeah, happens? that one. I am. Um, well, I crashed it. <laughs> 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 I was. I was. It was the first day up there actually on the jigsaw. So I'd done a track day on the CBF uh, previous that, and I brought the jigsaw up. And it's funny. I even remember saying to to um, herself uh, that I had. I remember the day before I was like, oh, I really, because I wasn't a hundred percent happy with the bike. You know, I'd gotten it together. I'd gotten it on the road. It was riding nice, but I really wasn't happy with the rear suspension. I know enough mm. about suspension to know when it's not right, but I, you know, I'm not a genius, especially with shocks. Shocks are, especially with Dean after showing me, they're very, very, very complicated with all the little springs that have to move to allow fluid to flow. They're crazy. Forks wow. are way more simple than, than shocks. But um, Jesus, I thought shock was just a a big spring. Man, there's like there's like, well, it looks like hundreds, but it's probably like twenty. These little spring um, like washers that are slightly bent and they're different thickness and stuff, and they're actually what let the fluid flow. Wow. Yeah, it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. But I I really wasn't happy anyway with my suspension, particularly rear front. I knew it was a bit soft, but manageable. Um. And I had an off feeling the whole time. I remember I went up anyway and I was taking it easy enough. I was in novices and um, pushing on a bit, getting getting more comfortable. And then one of the marshals, um, Chris, who was an absolutely brilliant teacher up there as well. Just if, if you're if you're ever in Mondello, talk to Chris, he'll look after you. Um, and I was pushing on a bit more than in inters, you know, got a few laps in, felt really good. As far as I remember, there was a red flag with come in and it was probably a combination of a lot of things, including me not heating the tires back up fully, just went out with excitement, mm-hmm. a bit of excitement and um, was pushing on towards a corner that I still don't really like now. And I probably never will. Cause I just can't get the line I want on it. But I came in quite close to um, the curb and Chris was behind me, actually had his GoPro on and the, the rear suspension never fully, it never actually, it, I had compressed it coming into the corner and it basically just, it was fully, fully, fully compressed. So I leaned, 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 and just the rear tire just let go. Um, All right. Now I look back in the video and I was like, did I, did I like throttle it out? And uh, despite a few comments that I did get in that one saying you were too happy on the throttle, you know, you, you gunned it. I literally have a 360 cam that I can point directly at my mm-hmm. hand and it doesn't move. It's, it's, it's completely even throttle. But anyway, that's immaterial. I did crash it. And then, yeah, the rear end went, and I don't know, have you ever had a like a low side like that? But you do not know that it's happening. It's yeah. there one second, gone the next. And then all yeah. I remember was uh, sky ground, sky ground, sky ground, sky ground. Uh, yeah, it was, it, was, it was an interesting one. In- good experience, I suppose. <laughs> I stood up from it and walked away, so couldn't be that exactly. bad. <laughs> it's better a low side than a high side. Absolutely. Absolutely. And no, actually, you don't want to after- be doing a Superman. Good. No. I witnessed a few high sides up there and uh, it is what encouraged me to buy a, like a climb GPS air vest for track days. Cause I've done quite yeah. a few this year. So it, I, w- I saw one or two, one guy had the exact same vest on. And I mean, he just stood up and walked literally strolled away yeah. from something that if he hadn't had one on, it would have been bad. And I've witnessed, unfortunately, a few of the people have gotten hurt. So yeah, better to have it on, I suppose in that case, when you're doing a good few. Absolutely. Uh, it's funny you say that. I've I've just been um, approached by is it Helite Helite, mm. the French company, and um, they're they're giving me one of their sort of GPS electronic vests. Excuse me to um, try out next year. So hopefully I'll I'll not have to try it out for real. But who knows? But had to have it there as backup. You know yourself. Yeah. Yeah. I did a wee post on my socials actually um, when I when I was up there at the NEC, the amount of people that, that contacted me going, not just with Halite, but with various other air vests, people were just like, you know, save my life. He's, you know, I, I've crashed wearing a, a vest and I walked, as you said, I walked away or, mm. you know, I had a sprained wrist, whereas I should have had obliterated shoulders, broken neck, yep. all the rest of it, ribs. So, I mean, they obviously work. I, I've I've got mates who've had big crashes wearing them, so... Yeah, it'll be interesting to see. I hope, yeah. I hope I don't get to test it in anger, but <laughs> we'll see. What what I think is very interesting is like Alpine Stars, they say that mm. their base level air vest is 10 times better than their top level back protector. 
yeah, like yeah it yeah. will protect your back 10 times better which look I know they're a big investment but I mean that's the reason I went with the one I went with is you pay like half of the full cost up front and then you can pay 12 euro every month for mm. three years which mm-hmm. uh, look it, 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 suited, it suited me to do that way obviously if you can pay up front it's probably better to do it up yeah, front yeah. but mm. Um, yeah, I'd be really interested to see how the Helite one gets on because I'd like to get one that you wear over your clothes for the road, whereas yeah. the, you know that GPS one you wear under your leather, so it's it's okay, really for right. more track track applications. Yeah, 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 yeah. One thing that I'm I'm unsure about is I, I always wear a rucksack, and I don't know if I could put a rucksack over the top of of this. I'll need to speak with Helite. I don't. So fair I don't know. question, yeah. Yeah, who knows? I'll have to. I suppose I you, probably, find out. You, you probably can provide it. It's. Um, it the the rucksack's loose enough to let it expand because yeah. that's what they say on the one you know that goes under my leathers is they, they check you for how much space you have under your leathers which at this time of year is definitely less than it was in summer <laughs> but uh you know they check they check for that place so provided it can expand i mean yeah. it's it's it'd be the same as you crash with a rucksack except you have an airbag between you and the rucksack so yeah, i mean yeah. it would make Jesus. sense I'm lucky to get my phone in my leathers when I'm wearing them, <laughs> let alone an air vest. Anyway, never mind. Um, right, crazy legs on a bike, Jay. Uh, yeah, negative comments. I mean, I, I know Crazy Legs has a channel, Crazy Legs on a Bike, and um, it's just part and parcel, isn't it? It's part and parcel of of putting yourself out there on social media these days, sadly. Mm. It's it's one big massive school playground and you are gonna get arseholes. And I'll I'll I will quantify this. Sometimes people aren't being arseholes. Sometimes people they either don't convey what they're saying correctly in mm-hmm. in text or as I've been victim of not victim I've been guilty of quite a few times the person reading that comment can take it in all manner of different ways. I've, I've, I've read Absolutely. comments and thought someone's having a pop and I've had a pop mm. back, gone to sleep, woke up the next day to read the reply only to reread their comment and go, Oh shit. They weren't actually having a pop. It was just me having a bad day. So yeah. Yeah. But I think it comes back to what you said. We're, you know, it's, it is, it, it, we're all human at the end of the day. You make yeah. those kind of reading errors. And I think, you know, I've I've done the same, and people have done the same back to to some of my replies. And yeah. I always just try basically give give people the benefit of the doubt, unless they're very clearly being an arsehole. But then, for me, uh, at the same time, and it's it's something I kind of try to keep in my head is you're you're never going to please everyone, and not yeah. everyone will like you. Yeah, and there's nothing yeah, yeah, you can yeah. do about that. Yeah, if you if you can't deal with that fact, you know, if you're a people pleaser and you you just want to be liked by everyone, it mm. is. Any form of social media is not the place to raise your head because it'll be a tough space to be, yeah. Aye, and it will get you. You know, it it does have an effect. You know, if you're having a bad time and you start reading even one negative comment, it, it can work its way in there. So just yep. be wary of of all that. <laughs> and, and if you are, if you do go that route, I suppose, and you you know you're having a bad day, which I I do a lot, and it's it's funny because I'll get messages off people like, oh, you didn't, you know, you're not on Instagram today, you're not on YouTube today, and mm. you know, if I know those people, I'll just be like, yeah, no, it's not feeling it today. If I'm having a bad day and I'm aware of it, I just don't even I don't even look at the comments because mm. you, you know you, it does affect you. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So if you, oh, totally. like you said, it colors your reading of stuff and everything. So I just leave them alone for the day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, it's funny. Do you find yourself going? I go through, well, it's not even phases, but there's just been times when I've sort of had enough of the whole, the whole sort of it, the influencer thing. I hate, I don't like, I, I, I like when people say my videos or my content has had an impact on them, you know, mm-hmm. and it's made them get out there and go and explore places and meet up with new people and try new things. I love that. That's why I do it, you know, yep. but, I also, I really don't like the term influencer because I'm seeing what's happening on social media at the moment with, with people, people who've come from nowhere, who all of a sudden start posting generic content and all of a sudden get a massive following. And they're now like, you know, they're now like influencers. And I think I I don't want to be associated with that. I don't, I don't want to be part of that world. But mm. it's it's a hard one because it it very much is part of this whole sort of moto vloggy. Certainly, if you if you want to either 
do it as a living, which is effectively what I'm doing at the moment, or you you want to you want to grow, you mm. you, you you have to play a bit of the game, and I just I'm finding it a real conflict at the moment, and I I don't I don't want to be a walking billboard. I really don't want any of that. I don't. I'll never. I'll never promote something that I'm not happy with, or I've never tried even myself. And I see so many people promoting bikes or products who they've literally maybe sat on it, and, yeah. and that's it. And I just think oh, I, I don't want to be part of that. But yeah, it's difficult. Yeah, one hundred percent, it is, and it's. It, I, I to be honest, I think it's it's actually the nice thing about being like a smaller channel like myself is. Mm. I, at, at the moment, I'm in the nice space that you know I have a job, but I, I actually I like my job. Do I want to do yeah. that style of job forever? Again, please don't fire me, boss. <laughs> no, <laughs> absolutely not. But you know, do is it a nice space to be that you know, really and truly, if 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 YouTube was to explode in the morning for me and delete my channel or whatever else you know it, it really and truly it just make me really sad but i'd be absolutely mm. fine financially and everything else it's mm. it is a very difficult line for you know guys like yourself to tread and i think you see that with with how it affects growth is you know if you look at the likes of um one of my favorite channels shay tree surgeon you know mm. he he has kind of always really stuck to his guns but then you see other channels that maybe have bent a bit more and went with certain things. And I won't name anyone because I'm not here to do that, but yeah, yeah, I know, I know they've grown exponentially. But then again, you see that he actually gets more views than a lot of those guys with the huge number of followers. And mm. you'd, you'd wonder, have people just kind of gotten wise to, you know, that, you know, like that, they, they literally brush past the bike once and smell yeah. it. And then they're like, oh, well, this is the best bike I've ever touched. Yeah. So, it, 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 it really was a... Uh... Excuse me. It really was an eye opener for me going to some of these these press launches, and you, you know, it's, it's not even it's not even like a bike launch where everyone gets invited to the same place and then everyone goes away and they have escorted rides. It's not mm-hmm. those I'm talking about. It's these ones where you turn up and they've got a fleet of bikes and it's just given to you. you there you go. You get on that bike and you spend however long you want on that bike, as long as it's back by the end of the day. Happy mm-hmm. days, brilliant. Well, I turned up there and in my head, I was like, well, there's two bikes that I want to ride. It means I'm only going to get half a day on each one. And I'm thinking, Jesus, how, how can I, how can I get a good feeling for this bike in half a day? The amount of journalists and influencers that turned up and literally 40 minutes, 20 minutes, 40 minutes, (laughs) which is in, you know, you're in a place where you're not really going to get very far in that time. And uh, they came back and did a vid on it. And I'm just like, how? How have you How have you got a feeling for that bike in that length of time? Maybe yeah. it's me. Maybe I need to speed up. I don't know. But it was a, no, it was a I, big I, sort of eye-opener, definitely. Yeah. I, I like, it, it actually sounds like you do very similar to what I do. Like, I, I'm lucky enough, and I hope long may it continue, um, you know, like the likes of Freeman Motorcycles, near me who who let me take out bikes that they have up for sale i mean that's a hell of a lot of trust to put put with something mm. number one which oh, i massively insane, appreciate yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah, crazy yeah. i don't i still don't know why people do it like i know <laughs> there might be some there might be some benefit for them on a you know a social media front or maybe to get the bikes out there but uh, to be honest i think seamus the, the owner is just he's just a, a really good dude and um you know everyone who works there i'm not going to name everyone but they're all they're all lovely and actually very supportive of, of the channel but what i do with them is, you know, I'll organize a bike that I'm interested in and I'll go down and I ride that bike around like the cameras are off, mm. you know, and I, I ride it around. I get a really good feel of it. I do all my brake tests and I get comfortable with it because the last thing you want to do as well is in my, for me, is launch into a video and just be going around like, yeah, and, you know, a, a newborn giraffe really yeah, looking yeah, you like mean. you don't, yeah. you know, so that that's that's how I do them. And like that, you know, people, I get messages a lot like, oh, I see they have this bike, this bike, this bike. Could you do them? And like, for me, if I'm lucky, I'll get to them twice in one month and I get to do one bike a day because, you know, you're there, you might be four to six hours and that's, that's how long it takes me. You know, I want to get Mm -hmm. mileage on it. I fill it up with fuel, put mileage on it, get comfortable with it, do all my little tests. And then I start the video and just kind of run through everything again. And that's, Mm -hmm. that's how I like to do it. Um, And yeah, I I completely agree. I, I, I don't think you get a good feel for something, especially if, you know, you don't go away and actually, because you, you, it, it's it's like anyone who says that they can jump onto any bike and 
you know, ride it as fast as they possibly can, unless they're like one of the guys in 44 teeth in 20 minutes. I don't believe them because it, for, well, for me anyway, I need to, you know, you need to get used to it. Brakes are different. Acceleration is different. Every single bike handles slightly differently. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it's, you yeah, need yeah, to get yeah. used to it and get comfortable with it. it. It's, I used to be very skeptical of, of the bike journals, you know, of your MCNs, people like, mm-hmm. you know, your, your Nevesy and, and all that lot. I, and I used to think to myself, you know, really? You're just riding a bike. But it's given me a new appreciation for those folk, especially now I'm doing a lot of work with um, Simon Weir as mm. well. You know, he used to be, he still is a journalist. But they have, they have, a, they have a depth of feel, a feel and, under, and an understanding for a bike and its geometry. And I appreciate you probably will as well, the mechanics of the bike, which I will never, ever possess, you know. And, and for those people... Absolutely, I I fully believe they can jump on a bike and almost straight away get a feel for mm. the bike How it's, just in the initial yeah, thoughts yeah. of it. Yeah, for me, I, I need I need a lot of time and a lot of miles on a bike, and even then, a lot of the time I struggle to convey it in any technical terms. I, I, I it tickles my dangles, you know that <laughs> it's ridiculous, but that's pretty much what. If a bike, if a bike tickles my nuts, if a bike makes me laugh, makes me feel great, then hopefully I can portray that mm. on video. But I can't tell you why it does it, and that's why the journalists are there because they will, they'll tell you it's doing but, it because of this. But I also, I think, I think that is actually why I like watching your videos because for me, I I will jump on a bike and I will dissect it in my head mechanically. Mm. That's that's just how my brain works. And mm. I know that's, that's really like some people who watch my videos and be like, why, why did you talk about, you know, that one thing on yeah. the frame for so long? Right. Cause it really, that's what caught my interest. But yeah. I think that's why I like your review videos so much is they're very much completely different to what I would pick up on, which is really mm. good because if someone was to go and watch, say one of your videos and then one of my videos in the exact same bike, they will be different, which is yeah, what you want. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, yeah Totally. And yeah, I actually, I really like um, a lot of what Nevesy does. Uh, he's, uh, yeah. I really like how he talks about suspension and stuff like that. He's, 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 uh, uh, hopefully I'd like to meet all these people one day myself, but you never know. <laughs> he, Nevesy's got so much better on camera, is not he? Do, do you yeah. remember when MCN first sort of dabbled in YouTube? It was, it was horrific. It was terrible. Sure. We're all and like now that, they're though, actually, the <laughs> and now and now they're producing really good content. Really like good. He's he's plainly much more comfortable on video now than he than he used to be, mm. and uh, yeah, it's, it's it's good stuff in it. I tell you, what, I also I'm going to say this because because he's a mate, you're a mate, John Lamb Chops. I like yes. that about uh, Ch- Chops' channel because he he's quite mechanically minded, probably not to the same level as you, but he. He certainly does a bit more research on bikes mm-hmm. than I, I literally just jump on the thing. I don't know half a time. I don't even know what size bloody engine it is, or if it's a triple, or if it's an inline four. I just jump on it. Chopsy, he will go into the technical side of things, and again, as you were saying, I like that in his vids. You get, you get, you get a different, you get a different input, don't you? Mm-hmm. When you when you watch a technically minded person's video, Definitely. as opposed to somebody winging it like like me you know <laughs> well, you're, you're not winging it you're just it's a different perspective um but the, the lamb chops actually i really liked his recent um you know this 1000 double r and i'm sorry if this is spoilers for anyone that he he ended up not purchasing um mm. i really liked how no number one i liked the videos he did the whole way along and that's something i'd, I'd love to do eventually is get those long-term loaners oh yeah, um, yeah. because me it too. really gave he broke it down so well like you know what i mean mm. Not, not even just to write it, just because he got to really live with the thing and be like, at the end, this is why I'm not buying it, which was, I mm. think, uh, it, it's funny, you know, it, it, it's strange that by saying I'm not buying this bike because these reasons, and it actually was like, yeah, no, I, they're really, that's why I would buy it, you know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. it was it was just cool, because I mean, I'd love a H2, but I'm never going to own a H2. Yeah, <laughs> I don't, yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. fit on them. <laughs> <laughs> Neither does he really, if truth be told. But, you know, he's yeah. hanging on there. He's hanging on. Oh, um, but the noise. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's a beautiful noise, isn't it? It's fantastic. Ridiculous. But that RR, man, have you ridden the RR? Unfortunately not. Mate, I've, it's just... I've sat on a few, but that's it. It's awesome. I, I am a jixer, man. 
I was going to say through and through, but I'm a convert to the RR. I hate, I really didn't like the, the previous versions of the RR, but this new one is just, oh, I love it. It it's cost a bike me my job I would, ultimately, I would but really I really hope I own at some point. Yeah. Yeah. I, nice. I've, I've ridden several S1000 XRs thanks to my uncle because he's owned two. He owned the Gen 1 and he's on, he owns a Gen 2. And mm. I don't know why he does it, but he trusts me to take his bike away for extended periods of time. <laughs> he's insane. Um, but if, like, how good the XR is, I can only imagine how good the double R is. Like, it's just. Do you think? I just don't, I don't get the XR. I don't get I, it. It doesn't do anything for me. I wouldn't, I put it to you this way, right? It's it's a tough one for me because I, I every time I ride that bike, I love it. I love when I'm riding it. But then afterwards I get off and I, I said it in several of the videos I made on it. You know, you get off the bike, you turn around, you're like, but what are you though? Yeah. What, what, like. Yeah. You're, you're brilliant at lots of things, but I don't know why you exist. Mm. <laughs> yeah. And one, one bike I rode recently was actually with Freeman's that I, it's, it's lived in my head for quite a while. And I didn't think I'd like it as much as I did was actually the F850 GS. Now it was like mm. fully kitted out one. It had all the fancy bits up and down, quick shifter, all that stuff. And afterwards, it's only because I'd ridden them fairly close together and I got to spend a week with the XR there recently in terrible, terrible weather, but still got to spend a week with it. I was like, you know, I'm never going to not have something like my, well, I'm always going to mess rad, but will I have another sport bike for, mm -hmm. you know, hooligan stuff? Um, why would I own an XR with it? Because an XR is, it's very much, for me anyway, it's like a, it's like it's a one bike for someone who wants definitely wants to bring it to the track a lot and yeah. you know wants to go out and attempt to lose their license on a daily basis but also yeah. wants to do a touch of touring but like mm -hmm. even the boxes that come on it the BMW boxes to put it to put a blood they're not big enough you know I said mm. I said that in the commuter video I did on it is like the box the top box on my CBF you could fit a, a small human in the top box in on the XR it barely fit my lunch. Um, <laughs> like it, it's just so small. Whereas the yeah, F850, um, I mean, that would do everything I would want on a daily, daily, and still plenty fast enough. They're not by any means going to tear your face off, but they're plenty mm. fast enough and so comfy. See, I just, I, I really didn't, I didn't get the 850. I just, really, I, That's I couldn't, I, I couldn't for any reason understand why anyone would buy one. I just, I just didn't get it because I, to me, it's like, okay, if you, if you want a smaller bike than the GS, okay. But then mm -hmm. it's not a boxer. It's just, it's a, it's a different it's, bike. It's, it's a small bike. You. So it's not a GS, is it? It's not a boxer engine GS. It's a different bike. So for me, I'm, I'm like, it, it didn't it didn't have any soul for me at all appreciate everyone's different but for me i was just yeah. mm. the xr the xr had loads of soul it was fantastic but it's a sports bike it's a sport bike for older it's, people it's that want a bit bike, more yeah. comfortable yeah and then for, for me i'll be i'll just be like well i'm i'm assuming that if you're getting a bit longer in the tooth maybe you don't want to be doing 160 170 miles an hour if you do, the XR is the bike for you. Absolutely. But, you know, if you if you want if you want sport bike performance for road speeds like up to 80, 90 mile an hour, it's gotta be the GS or or a big adventure bike because I, I will say I haven't ridden the 1250 GS, so it's right. I, let's I not may, just go yeah. Let's not just go 12 the 1200, 1250 GS because people switch off. Modern adventure bikes. <laughs> Modern adventure bikes, yeah. No, actually, that that said, would I would I buy the F850 over the Africa Twin because I've been lucky enough to write mm. those recently as well? No, I'd yeah. have the Africa Twin first, just because yeah. it's it ha it does have that little bit more character. But that said, the BMW 850, I don't know, did you have one with all of the bells and whistles? Like it had the, you know, the oh, automatically man, man. adjusting shock. It had the up down quick shifter. It was just a really nice place to be. And I wrote, mm. I mean, I I took that off for even longer than I meant to just because I was really enjoying riding the thing. Yeah. Um, but, and don't hurt, don't kill me now. Cause I know you own a BMW. I think a lot of BMWs in particular, cause I've ridden a few of them. They lack soul just because they're so good. Totally. They're totally. just so, so good. I absolutely. Absolutely. I, I totally agree with you. 
it, it's it's funny though, is it? Because you try to explain that yeah. to someone who doesn't get it. Like you're like, mm. no, my Srad has like a massive personality because it's always it's always doing something that you're just like, ah, oh, that you know, like when you're breaking into corners, the Srad loves to to wiggle its arse, and then you know when you're pulling up out of it. Like obviously, I'm talking on the track here, by the way, not the road. <laughs> <laughs> when you're pulling up out of a corner and just gunning it, you know, I, <laughs> I have the, uh, I have the, um, I have a, a steering damper on it. But if I didn't, I mean, that thing just shakes its head like a, yeah, yeah, yeah. like a wet dog. But it's really hard to explain to people. All of those things are terrible, but great. And then you get mm. in one of those BMWs, and it's just like, you know, you can find. Yeah, you can fling it into a corner, and it's just like, yeah. no problem, sir. Well take you out the other side so yeah 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 i've always said that i've always said that they are too refined they're too they are too good and as soon as you say oh the gs it's too good people just go oh wanker but you're not you're not <laughs> going oh i'm better than everybody else it, it literally is it's not involved enough it, it doesn't it doesn't towel flick you every now and then does it like yeah, K- yeah, yeah. the ktms um the ktms even in, even the new 1290 super adventure um, S, which is fucking hooligan. It's great. It's a fantastic machine. It's an amazing machine. Oh, Even that shit. on a private road, obviously, once you get north <laughs> of like 120 and you're pinning it wide open, it starts putting a wiggle on through mm. the bars. And, you know, that's going to waken, that's going to wake you up a little bit. Yeah. yeah. And it gives um, you a bit, I think it, like, you respect it a bit for us. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> As in, as in, like more. you, you know, like if Give I, if me I, more. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Whereas when you do them, the BMWs, they're just perfect. Yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, uh, you know, I, I've said this before. I, I would have bought that Super Adventure S, the KTM. But it's there was two things. One was the reliability. Still, a lot mm. of electrical gremlins going on. And then I, I jumped, I took the KTM back and I jumped on my tractor. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I thought to myself, I, I had it on camera, but the GoPros, thanks GoPro, the GoPros <laughs> died. Well, they didn't die. They just they just muted all the blooming audio. So I I've got no like audio. GoPro. <laughs> oh, Jesus. But I, I actually said on camera, you know, if I jump on this bike now and it doesn't do anything for me, this is going to be the most expensive test ride I think I've I've ever done. You know, it's going to be the most expensive two weeks I've ever had. And thankfully, I, I jumped on the tractor, and it genuinely wasn't that far. But for me, wasn't that far behind the the KTM. Definitely mm. not as engaging. Definitely not as dynamic. But good. It's all right. It's enough for me to go. Okay, I'll keep you for a while. We'll see. But we'll see. I, I suppose the thing is, there's very few people, even uh, for instance, on a track. There's very few people who can really take what bikes can do to a hundred percent of their ability. And then there's even less people on the road who are willing to, or have the skill to take those oh, bikes. Totally. 100%. So, yeah, yeah. you know, if it, like you said, it's enough for you. You will get almost the exact same out of all of them. Definitely. Really. Man, I've taken a blooming, I took the Sinus 125 out and, and, and it I put know, a bigger smile on my brilliant. face than, than like thousand litre sports bikes have in the past. It's, it's just, it's, just, it's great, great bit of fun. Just yeah. fun. I don't. I don't need to be doing stupid speed anymore to have fun on a bike, and it's it's nice to be in that place now. Because <laughs> yeah. before it was all about speed. It was all about near death and speed, and it's just not <laughs> any more for me. Well, I'm happy to hear that. <laughs> it's like imagine you with your eyes peeled open. Just... <laughs> I used I used to love it on my Jixers. I used to love it. I was second gear power band. Everywhere, you know, 120, mm. 130, into third gear, keep on going, max the thing out. It's ridiculous. That is addictive, though. It is addictive. It, okay, it is massively. It's it great is, fun, yeah. but it's it's a it's a very quick way to either end up in jail or um or somewhere you know, worse <laughs> on, on a slab. Yeah, ultimately. Yeah. yeah. And I do. But I anyway. think um, that that tour you did on the small bikes i actually think that's something mm. i number one i'd love to do it i'd absolutely love to do something like it i think that is something that everyone who really loves loves bikes should try to do something like that because that just looks like so much fun and it just, and like you said it just you really don't need to go as fast to still have good crack i think it's once everyone's on balanced bikes that's what makes the yeah. difference uh, if you're if you're the one pinning it to try keep up yeah, yeah that, yeah, that does suck a little bit but you mm-hmm. know if everyone's on balanced bikes and actually um, I don't know do you ever watch the guys, but Ari Henning's actually a guy I learned quite a bit of mm-hmm. mechanically, say. Uh, he used to do 
great videos on it. Still does really good Instagram lives and stuff. Um, but he did that trip with um, oh, what's the other man's name? I can't remember it now. The one up to Alaska on the C ninety. Yes, yes. I've not watched it, but a lot of people have told me about it. Brilliant. Literally, I watched that, and I have an XT two hundred and fifty in the shed that's been in someone else's shed for a long time that I got that needs to go back together. And then as soon as I did that, I went down and I started looking at it again, like, right, okay, the two stanchions are bent. I need to do that. I need to do the carbs. And I want to get this thing running to do something. Just, just like, oh, I'm going to go to the most northern point of Ireland on this slow ass 13 brake horsepower XC250. Why not? Like, 13. <laughs> it's like, it's 13. like, I think they were 13 or 18 standard. Mate, that's like a supercar. Do you know the Sinus is <laughs> 11? I think the new Sinus is 11. <laughs> Yeah, I weigh a lot, though. <laughs> I need that 13. <laughs> Are you more than 21 stone? Uh, I think I'm about that at the moment, yeah. I think I'm about that. <laughs> You'll be all right. You'll be all right. <laughs> You'll be surprised. You'll be surprised. Um, Folks, if you're listening to this and you want Ari Henning to come on, can you please post on your socials and tag him in? I'm, I would love to have Ari on here for a chat. It would be awesome. I would tag love, him, love to hear that, yeah. I would, I would do that myself because I'd love to hear you have an interview with him. I, I would love to chat with him, definitely. For sure. I, was, I tried to get, I tried to get Nevesy and, and Chad and various other journals on, but there's just... It's just, I don't think this is a thing. Well, they basically said, no, it's not our thing. So <laughs> I'm not Bennett's. So never mind. <laughs> fair, fair, fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah. I, to be honest, it, I think if anyone in that circle, say, of, of, of you know, legit journalists were to mm. listen to some of these, so I think, you know, there's a different audience you can reach and it's still all bike people. So Definitely. I think they're yeah, mad yeah, yeah. Not, to, not to give it a go. Because you're, you're, I mean, you're, Pretty high up there in Spotify now, right? Uh, let alone uh, yeah, the other places. It, it's ridiculous. In terms of the podcasts, I mean, th- this podcast is it's top 10%. It's it's not chasing the racing. There, It's weird. To get from like 10% to top 5% is a huge jump. Yeah. Uh, I get sort of between 10 and 15,000 downloads a, a month um, for the podcast, which puts you in top 10% internationally, believe it or not. But to get That's top really five, good, yeah. it's, I think it's half a million downloads yeah, yeah, yeah. a month. So it's a massive jump from 10 to, to five. But I suppose though, when you, when you consider who's in the top five, I mean, you do have the likes of Joe Rogan. Yeah. Um, <laughs> one of the podcasts I listen to a lot is the last podcast on the left. I'd say they're ridiculous. I mean, they're, they're patron, they're, Patreon I'm, I patron them as well because I, I felt bad they were like the top of my Spotify rewind yeah. thing last year I was like ah I should probably throw them some money every month so I listen to all of their podcasts but they're they get like I think it's $76,000 a month on Patreon wow so that just crazy. tells you that just tells you how popular they are it's, it's crazy but I mean fair play well deserved they're, they've been doing it for 10 years or something Mate, there's people on Patreon earning Upwards of a hundred and fifty thousand dollars a uh, is it a month or an episode a week? I think it's a Whoa. month. It's incredible, it's incredible money. There's not many, but there are people earning that. It's insane. That's crazy. That's crazy. It's nuts, isn't it? Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Thank you to everyone that follows on my Patreon. But I don't earn anyone near that. <laughs> Me, yeah, yeah, I, I definitely don't. But I have to say, there was, um, I said it on one of the videos, there was one month I had a, a particularly bad month financially for several reasons. Just everything broke on me. And mm. um, then, of course, which is fine. Like in my, in my own life, if things break, I don't need them. You know what I mean? I can go to work and all that. But then pretty much all of my bikes broke. And I swear to God, the money from the patron actually paid for it. It was, I, I can't even remember what it was, but it was something small. I was just like, I, I have no money left. And mm. the Jigsaw was broken. The Magna was playing up because it, it, the Magna has weird electrical gremlins. So I've just, I don't have indicators at the moment, but it runs fine. So hand signals for me till I save up to buy one of those M units or something to rewire it completely. Um, right. And then, yeah, there was the CBF that was broken, which is, it's, that is my daily. That's my daily. That's my thing. That's what I use to get everywhere. So uh, yeah, they saved me. So thank you very much, everyone. <laughs> I really appreciated that. <laughs> uh, I, I've said it umpteen times on here. I, I couldn't, I couldn't do this full time without Patreon. They, they, they make up pretty much half my income. So I couldn't do it without, without you folks. Thank you. In fact, I, I lost a sponsor today, which was fantastic. It's just what you want to hear, but just before Christmas. Oof. Yeah. But um, anyway. Yeah, I would say who it was. 
Uh, yeah, I will do anyway. I don't owe them anything. B Moto, yeah, they just decided to pull, which is awesome. Um, oh, right. Really? Yeah, it's great. Uh, there's reasons behind it. Um, yeah, I, I will not go into the reasons, but yeah, they've, Fair they've pulled. Yeah. Never mind. <laughs> sorry, oh, well. sorry, dear dad. That's all right, man. It's uh, life goes on. Do you know what I mean? You just you got to make you got to make things work, haven't you? Mm. It's part of uh, being self-employed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, next one, Harley. Uh, oh, sorry, I'll just have a quick read. Make sure I got all of um, Crazy Legs' questions there. Uh, yeah, yeah, that was just about negative comments online. He Harley, really set us off on one, didn't he? <laughs> he did. Yeah, yeah. We we <laughs> proper went on one there. Harley, how's it, guys? What's the biggest misconception people have about you, and why do they think that? Oh, that's a good one. That's a very good one. Oh wow. Um, let me think now. Let me think. Um, do you ever know what people think about you, unless? Unless they actually have the balls to say it to your face. But there is one actually that 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 that's been said to me several times. It's funny. So I suppose I suppose that's probably the biggest one I know about, we'll put it that way. Um is you know, I think people expect me in person. Um and actually the the uh the Chronicles of Mr. Fish has met me in person. So he probably could confirm this. Um I obviously don't come across in videos and stuff, but I'm actually very shy in person. Mm which I know probably looks ridiculous, like six foot seven creature and just going like hiding in the corner. But um, that's been said to me a few times. You know, I went to like uh, Freeman Motorcycles had, had an event for, um, I think it was Moto Witch. Was, well, I think it was Moto Witch. Um, and they had an event and I, I said I'd call down because they're only half an hour for me. You know, any excuse to get out on the bike really. And mm-hmm. there was some people there who saw me post on Instagram that I was going. There was some people obviously said hello, but afterwards one or two people messed me like, I, I never even noticed you there. I was like, how would you miss me? I was there. And they were like, oh, I just thought you'd be like, you know, big and talking and whatever. It's like, no, no, I was literally, I'd stay to the edge and talk to one person at a time. I don't do yeah, crowds. Yeah. It's not, it's not something I'm good at. So I suppose that's probably the biggest one. Why they have it, I suppose, because I make, I make YouTube videos. You, may, you probably yeah, yeah. come across as like a, a super confident person. But yeah, no, I'm not in reality. So, so I, just, uh, I uh, sorry to interrupt. Carry on. Carry no, on. no, work away. I was finished. <laughs> um, I, I, no, I can, I can sympathise with that. I was very much like that. You know, even, even though uh, I, you know, I was a bouncer before I joined the old bill. So you're very much, you know, you've got to put yourself out there. But that wasn't. Mm-hmm. I was like that from a job, but in my private life. I was quite reserved, unless I'd had a beer, in which case I was naked somewhere on the dance floor. But um, yeah, it's fair enough, yeah. You know, <laughs> you know. And then in the old bill, again, you're putting on a uniform and you're portraying, you're portraying something to to mm-hmm. the public. But privately, I, I was like you. I was very reserved. I would never be the center of attention. I just wasn't into that. It was mm-hmm. traveling. Traveling changed all that for me. Not that I, I don't think I'm an extrovert now, but I would never have done this before. You know. Yeah. Uh, invited people I don't really know on to have a chat for a couple of hours. I would have never done any of that. Um, and now, now I've got no problem. You know, I give I get up and give talks and presentations in front of people. I, I don't care if it's, you know, six people at a local club or 20,000 people at a big event. I'm, that doesn't bother me. Fair but I, I also, <laughs> I'm sure you, you could, you could. Oh, but then, <laughs> I'm, I'm also perfectly happy to flip the switch and just be like a little recluse. You know, I quite like my own space for sure. Yep. Whether that's on the bike and just go away and do my own thing or just sat at home with the missus and my dog and just chill for a while. You know, I'm, I'm quite happy in my own space, but for me, I, I also enjoy, I enjoy meeting people. I enjoy the social side for sure. And do you think, because actually it's it's something as well just just in case people listening are interested in it i suppose it's it's something that is kind of like a constant battle in my own head like even for the scotland trip for instance right i know all the three guys i went with because mm. i started making youtube videos you know and i've met i met two of the three in person before so um lovely guys by the way but what they don't know actually the only person i've said it already is, is obviously the missus but before like literally the first two days before as we were going i was like i don't think i can go I don't think I can go just because mm. I was like uh, freaking out a bit. But that happens to me even about making videos. So some days I'm just like, oh, I just can't talk to the camera. But I, I've gotten, it's, it's crazy. Like, but mm. 
I don't know do you do this but what how I get over it in, in my own head is just like no nah, you're just you you know tell yourself you're being a bit silly and it's actually why not why why but it was one of the reasons why I started making videos was to to kind of become more confident in that which has worked mm. I, I'm yeah, yeah. way better talking to people in public now and everything else and obviously doing this I, I wouldn't have done this three years yeah. ago no way yeah, <laughs> just, yeah. yeah same. it was weird same but I, I also I appreciate not everyone can do it I appreciate there's there's some people out there who have crippling anxieties and they yep. they, they just they, they, they're not in a position where they can go to themselves get on with it and do it which is how I do it and obviously which is how you do it yep. uh, but there's other things like I've said this before again on here you know things like I I'm going to lose people here women only track days I've said it again on here before really annoy me when people go oh but I get intimidated w women say oh I get intimidated when I turn up at a track day and there's there's men there mm. I get intimidated when I turn mm. up at a track day and there's people there it's uh, you know, I just, I just think, why, why do we have to like label all these things? I thought everything's about equality these days, isn't it? So just have, mm. let's just have a novice only day. Just, do you know what I mean? Yeah, a novice. Only, that's, I was actually going to say, I, I do get where people are like for track days, for instance, right? I, I completely understand certain things where you know, women do women only events where, you know, maybe there's drink involved, whatever else, because we all know mm. that plenty of guys get creepy, whatever, you know what I mean? No, that's, that's true. No, that is true. Yeah. yeah fair, yeah. fair, fair enough. No, I fair completely one. understand that. But for track days and to be, to be quite honest, if I ever saw anything like that at a track day, someone's getting punched in the face, you know what I mean? Mm. Because that, that is, it's, it's a completely different environment, but a novice only day. Absolutely. Because like you said, the first time you go up to one, you are breaking it. You see these guys with like, full board race bikes you know they're, they're race bikes Vans. And, yeah and they're just like i mean these dudes are like you know you, for all i know you could be like moto gp under there I, I don't know you know i don't know yeah, so yeah, yeah. yeah and even even like a real novice only track day i think that would be absolutely understandable as in you know obviously there's novices who've been to 10 track days but they're just still novices and mm -hmm. i mean they're way faster than a novice novice yeah and it can be really intimidating like that when people just are flying past you into corners and stuff. So I, I get that. But really, I think once you're under a helmet and under leathers, I mean, no one really cares what, you know, what gender you are. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you, you're there, aren't you? You're just you're, there. And you're you're just another it. biker. That's how I like to it's, look at it. Yeah, it's it's difficult because I've, I've, I've said this before on the podcast about th things like women-only track days and stuff. But then mm. I also realize I'm not a woman. You're a tall no, man. I, I I'm completely... a six foot three, twenty one stone Scottish geezer who yeah. who isn't afraid to say to somebody, "Shut your mouth." You know what I mean? Whereas exactly, yeah. <laughs> so so I, I suppose in a way, who am I to comment about how other people? Well, it's true, isn't it? God, yeah, no, yeah. Hell. this is like therapy. It, this, isn't it? It's it's very, yeah, <laughs> but it, it's a funny one because it, I completely get where you're coming from, but at the same time, it's it's something that has been, you know, even in many situations where I'll be like, "Oh, why are you doing that? That's that's stupid." They're you know they'll be like, "Well, Mike, you are you know a large male mm. human. It's of course it's difficult for you to to get into yeah. those shoes and understand." It's like, yeah, yeah. no, I, I can I can I can I can agree there. It is. You know, I, I'm looking at it from a very, very different perspective. So that's true. That is true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm sure. I'm I might sure take that back. Reason. Maybe I should take that. <laughs> well, it's not that I should take it back. I, maybe I feel like I should take that back. I don't know. Well, I think, do I, think, think I do. Folks? I do, I do know, agree. Let's know in the comments that you know, just to to, to, to end that one before we're all shot. Um, <laughs> is is I do think that for me anyway, I don't. You know, a biker's a biker. I, mm -hmm. I don't I don't care what's under under there, what bits you have. Yeah, same. You, you know, if you like bikes, I'll talk to anyone who has an interest mm -hmm. in bikes. Unless you're like some crazy axe murderer who also is mad into bikes, then I probably won't talk to you. Cause... Yeah, but then you've maybe got a story to tell too. Yeah, well, I suppose. Now you're not axe murdering me, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was going to say something. I can't remember what it was. Shiver. I've forgotten what I was going to say. <laughs> um, so I just read Harley's question again. Misconception people have about you and why do they think that? And I think well, for, for me on a personal, personal note, I think it's, I think it's not just random people, but maybe some friends that I've known for a long, long, long time 
I, I, I'm very conscious. I feel like I've changed as a person over the years and maybe they haven't seen the new, not the new, they, I maybe knew them in my school days or my uni days, you know, that sort of stuff. They've maybe not seen me as a, as an, what I think is an adult, like 25 plus when you grow up a bit and you've got a bit of life experience about you. Mm. I think a lot of people, a lot of people saw me as a bouncer, then as old Bill, and they automatically have this preconception that you're a type of person. You know, you're, you're power hungry. You're like, you're, you're going to be right wing in your thoughts because you're in that space. You've gone down that avenue, that sort of thing. Mm. And I, I really hope I'm, I'm not like that, you know? Oh, Sorry, thank you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> nice Christmas tree too. Oh, thank you. The cat keeps trying to knock it over. <laughs> <laughs> we've just not bothered this year because we've got the puppy, and um, yeah, yeah, it just it would last two seconds with that hulking, <laughs> great big horse of a dog. But, um, yeah, I, I think, I think, I think my friend, my friends know what sort of person I am, but other people definitely, again, going by comments and stuff. As soon as people hear that you were old Bill, or you know you you used to be old Bill. They just have mm. this preconception that you're some sort of right wing bigoted Nazi. And <laughs> I, I, I hope, I hope people realize I'm not. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, 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 I never, I, not that I always do it. Um, I don't, I like, it goes back to the no one's perfect thing. Um, I try not to make quick judgments on people anymore. Mm. Cause I think you, like you said, when you're yeah. younger, you do. And yeah. you know, you've proven wrong so many times. You're like, well, I'm an asshole. And then, yeah. you know, uh, pe- people prove you wrong, but yeah, like, like that, I think, um, and I would be definitely guilty of that. I wasn't with you because you were, you weren't a guard in Ireland, but definitely if you meet someone in Ireland and they're like, I'm a guard, I'm like, Oh, here we go. They're yeah, going to, yeah. they're going to hate me because I have a bike and I like to go fast and stuff. And, you know, oftentimes they're like, nah, I'd hate you if you went fast, like too fast, going fast. Yeah. is fine. You know, that's yeah. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, oh yeah. It's a, a, the adult bit's an interesting one too because I mean, your priorities change as well, don't they? I mean, when mm. someone knows you when you're younger and you'll just leave off everything and go this, that, and the other. But now, like, if some of my friends get on to me, I'm like, oh no, you know, I do two videos a week. I have to edit this night, or I don't have a video ready for this night. Like, I stayed up late last night to get a video done that's coming out tomorrow, so I can come on this, etc. You know what I mean? So there's different. Yeah priorities as well i suppose when you get older so yeah that's a that's an interesting one yeah are you another one that can get a video edited in like a day or two i can't do it 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 depends on the video type um i find the and it's something i've gotten a lot better on over the years because i think i've like 300 and something videos out now i was not always as quick yeah i know it's crazy when you look at the numbers you're like what how did that happen but Mm -hmm. i think the the videos in that i do in the shed I'm because I've done most jobs on bikes before. Um, before I go do it, I kind of know yeah. what I need to do. You know, you need yeah, to take yeah. the tank off, you need to take the airbox off, you need to take the carbs out, you need to, well, you know, whatever. So I kind of mm-hmm. have like an edited plan in my head already. So I'd actually turn the camera off when I need to turn it off, move it, do the yeah. next bit. You know, I know I'm like, I'll just leave the camera there because I'm going to speed it up for that bit later, whatever. Yeah. Those ones yeah, are quick yeah, to yeah. edit. But when mm-hmm. you go out and you're just because how I like the video, I did lots of different videos, but the ones I like doing the most is I'll just literally something will pique my interest during the day. And that I literally, I how I start those videos is I get on the bike and I go, I'm going to talk about X and I have no plan on how I'm going to talk about it. I often don't know what roads I'm going to go. I know I'm just going to take off in a direction and talk about it. They take a while to edit, obviously, because I mean, you—I yeah. could have repeated myself three times and I realized. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that totally. out, but yeah, it depends on the video, definitely. Yeah, yeah, same, it's the same. I, I've done. Um, I do this Kali Moto um, tutorial series now in, in mm-hmm. English, yep. and uh, again, they're really easy and quick to edit. Uh, exactly as you, because not only is the vid yeah. short, the vids generally like definitely under ten minutes long most of the time. So yeah. that's much easier to edit than a. 20 minute or 25 minute blooming vid isn't it it just doesn't take as long but it, as you said you got in your head you, there's a start middle and end whereas yeah. trip stuff is all reactive you're just filming what's going on so you then have to watch all that footage again and cut out 
everything that you think makes a story, cut eight hours of footage down to two, then go through that again and cut that down to yep. an hour and then again and cut it down to half an hour. And yeah. Yeah. I, I like people like, well, all of them, rich lamb chops, TMF. They're insanely quick at editing. I don't know how they do it. I mm. just, I'm painfully slow. It seems <laughs> like I'm I like, suppose every, for, everyone has their styles as well though. So. Yeah. 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 I don't know how they do it. Because I, I, I used to think, well, maybe maybe they're just not, maybe they're not putting. This sounds horrible. <laughs> I, I know this sounds horrible. I don't. Well, I mean, it does sound horrible. Maybe they're not putting <laughs> the same amount of effort in. But then I've I've filmed with all of them now. Yeah. Well, I don't really film. TMF doesn't really do the joint thing. But yeah, I filmed yeah. with um, Rich and Lamb Shops. They've got exactly the same content as me, and mm. they create fantastic vids, and they're doing it like. Chops will do it in a day, two days, and he's got he's got a thing he to, for you to look at. I'm just like, how the hell have you done that so quickly? Yeah, that's that's impressive. And had a full time job, you know. Yeah. No, I yeah, fair play. I yeah, it, it, I don't know, I don't know, like because I always look at my videos and I, I don't know. I, this might be something everyone does. I look at them and I, I don't think you're ever happy with it, no. ever. Yeah. Um, but even like the video I did now with with Dean on the forks, um, I spent a couple of days doing that one definitely because I wanted to. I think a part of that was I wanted to do, you know, him justice because it was like I asked him to make that. You know, I, I was mm-hmm. like, no, you're doing really good work. Like you've saved my ass. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, so I was really wanted to do that justice. Same with the, the reviews. Like it's it's I I get to ride those bikes for me. I want to ride those bikes for me, and I'm like. You know, I don't know what the other people feel like. Like they give me, they give me. Freeman's give me nothing. You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. all. So the only thing I'm like, okay, I want to do something for them. Or sorry, mm-hmm. as in, I mean, I give them. You nothing. give Freeman's nothing. Yeah, yeah. Nothing. Yeah. That, that that came out the complete opposite of the They give me like you know free bike to ride and all that. And yeah, yeah. Whatever, and they clean them and everything. I like. I'd be. I was a, like the first time. I was like, I'll wash the bike when I'm finished because there's mm-hmm. road dust on it now. And you gave it to me pristine. They're like, nah, don't worry about it. Um, so I, I want to do that justice as well. So yeah, I don't know how they do those that quickly. That's impressive. <laughs> and, but then and you know, <laughs> yeah, totally. Tell me about it. But going back on what you were saying there, never, never underestimate what you're actually providing for like Freemans. Because mm. if you look at it in the, I say in the old days, traditionally, advertising was on print, wasn't it? And so for mm. them, for them to print on a magazine that would get, I don't mean this, I don't mean this derogatory, but you know, your level with a 5,000 subscribers, okay? Mm -hmm. The reach you've got at 5,000. For them to get in a magazine that has that reach, they would still have to pay a significant amount of money in order to get that reach. Now, not only are they getting that reach, but they're getting targeted advertising for people who are specifically following you for your style of vid and for the content that you're providing. And you have a lot of weight in what you, as long as you don't bullshit, because people mm. sniff out bullshit really and quick. People, people know when you're bullshit, yeah. Exactly. But if people invest in you, and in which is what they're doing when they're watching your channel, and this is something I think a lot of us in social media maybe need to realize, is that you have a lot of weight there. You definitely have a lot of weight there. You, you Effectively, we're the new billboards, the new magazines. Mm. But I do think you have, I think you have a personal obligation as to how you you use that influence. Do you know what I mean? If you go and if you go and promote any old bullshit, then, yeah, 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 then then that that influence, that weight that you have, will go very very quickly because people and will suddenly, so. uh, uh, totally, hundred mm. percent. Whereas if you maybe pick and choose what you get involved with, or you just downright be upfront and be honest, which I know you do and, and, and I do and a lot of other people do. If you're upfront and honest about what you think about things, again, there's no such thing as bad publicity, I don't think. I really don't think there is because you're still getting it out there to your to your reach, aren't you? Mm. And you're as long as you quantify why you don't like X and you like Y and yeah. you're not so sure as Z, but maybe it's this, then people will make their own mind up. You, do you know what I mean? It's yeah, it's all I've, good, isn't it? I've never thought of myself as a magazine. 
Interesting. But no, actually, I've never, I've never done one like that. Yeah. We are yeah. the new. We are the new sort of magazines, effectively, aren't we? Because yeah, all suppose, we're doing yeah. is we're just get we're getting a bike or a product. We're getting it out there in front of eyeballs, which is mm. all posters, magazines, billboards did do. Yeah, yeah. You see, I, I mean, it's it's funny. It's going to sound really naive. Why I make videos is I love bikes. So, mm. uh, but that makes sense because I know that you've had me thinking about it. I mean, every review, everything I look up ever is YouTube. So, mm-hmm. it's, it's, I mean, it's what put me onto YouTube. I was like, oh, I, I want to do stuff like that. But yeah, I suppose yeah, yeah, that's yeah. A, it's a good way of looking at it. I yeah, probably I'd, sound I'd like suggest... an idiot now on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> no, that I, I, for me personally, I would rather hear that. For, you know, for, from someone like you, I'd rather hear that from you, where you're, you're sort of, you're not aware of the of the influence you have, than someone yeah. that goes, you know, I've got X amount, a hundred thousand subscribers, and this reach, and whatever I say, people are just going to swallow up, so I could just promote any old bollocks. I, yeah, you know, yeah. You'd much, I'd much rather have someone that's true and honest about what they're saying, and be able to see that. But that's just me. Maybe yeah. other people are different. Again, I, I, I don't know. Well, I mean, it, it's kind of, if there's someone out there, and I, I I hope I never hear anyone say that openly because it would definitely change my opinion of them. If um, if there's people out there who think like that, I mean, whatever they say is essentially worth nothing hmm. because, I mean, yeah. it's a non-opinion, isn't it? It's just... It's an integrity matter. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's an integrity matter, isn't it? At the end yeah. of the day. This is something that was was drilled into into me and 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 us in the old bill. When I joined two thousand and two, swing the old lamp. There was a saying in the Met: integrity is non-negotiable. And that I think, never mind in the old bill, in life that's true. Because as we've said before, if someone thinks you're full of shit, then your word means nothing. And ultimately, mm. at the end of the day, your word is all you've got, isn't it? It's oh, yeah, 100%. What, you know, what you stand for is all you have as a, as a, as a baseline in life. You know, it, 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 literally, you go from there in everything. So I think I've had too much to drink. I'm getting very philosophical. <laughs> Talk, <laughs> talking a drink, look at this. Velvet cake, oh, Pecan salt. Oh wow! <laughs> How good is Brew that? Brew dog velvet cake pecan salted caramel stout. It's gorgeous. I'm gonna have to it's get like me a, a can of like, that, mate. It's like a chocolate <laughs> cake in a can. It's awesome. Have Have Brew Dog sponsored you yet? No. Ah, no. Come on, Brew Dog. Come on. <laughs> Give the man I've, a sponsorship. <laughs> I've tried. I've tried to get them on the podcast purely because they're from like a, a town just down the road from where I grew up. They're like yeah. local boys, done good. And yeah. I would love to get them on and have a chat, but they've they've never replied. I don't. I don't blame them. I'm nobody compared to them. But um, uh, yeah, I just, still. I just, I just get people like people send crates of brew dog to the house i've had folk turn up outside the house with it people turned up at the <laughs> nec when i was on the stalls with cans of brew dog thanks keith cheers for that pal you know, <laughs> that's um, brilliant <laughs> it was awesome it's brilliant <laughs> anyways right uh we're an hour and a half in we've not even finished patron questions sorry two more sorry. to go yeah. <laughs> no no it's me it's me just just me just getting all deep and meaningful will carol <laughs> christmas greetings from dublin my question for both would you rather ride a bad bike on a good road, excuse me, or a good bike on a bad road? Merry Christmas to both of you. Michael, are you up for a pint in Kilkenny in 22? Yes. <laughs> right, there um, you are, Will. Drop him a line. Bad bike right, on good, good bike, road. bad road, bad bike, good road. I suppose you'd have to quantify what a bad bike is, wouldn't you? Like, are we talking like... A band at 600 with 200,000 miles that literally the swing arm is wobbling around because its bearings are completely gone and it's just terrifying. Mm-hmm. Or are we saying like, because some people think bad bikes are like, you know, smaller displacement because we had that discussion. So I, I'm going to assume that Will is a man of taste and refinement and he means a crappy old bandit that's falling apart. And I'd probably still take that in a good road, to be honest. Often a good bike in the <laughs> I'm glad you said that. Yeah, yeah. I, if it's a good road, I don't care what I'm riding, you're going to enjoy it, aren't you? It's just still, yeah. 
Whereas if you go onto a really bad road, say it's just nah, it's arrow just... straight for 300 miles. Nah, I couldn't do that. Nah. Just That's what cars and cruise nah. control is for. Absolutely. Um, that, yeah. that said as well, I mean, if you have an unreliable bike, because I, I absolutely love my Magna. I love it to pieces, but that bike needs to be stripped out of the frame and rebuilt, to be quite honest, right? <laughs> Which I'm going to do at some stage. Every time I ride that, usually something breaks, but that's part of the fun. You know what I mean? If you're out and it's just, it's like, oh, that's falling off. Oh, I need to try fix this here or whatever. It's, it, I, I don't know, have people ever gone on trips with bikes like those, but it, the most interesting trips you see on YouTube are people on bikes that are just about hanging on. Or, Absolutely. You know, it's that it, it's part of it. So yeah, bad bike on a good road, definitely, definitely. It's part of the adventure, isn't it? When yeah. things go wrong, the adventure starts. Definitely. Unless like you're buying a bike that is legitimately going to kill you, don't don't do that. <laughs> I, I won't advise that. <laughs> but you could have a giggle before it all ends. You never know. Mm. Anyway, Maybe. Pete English, last one. Ah, Pete good. English. <laughs> Hi guys, hope you're both fit and well. Well, I'm well, Pete. I'm yeah, well. I'll, I'll go with that as well. I'm well. <laughs> After recently spending an awesome week touring the south and west of Ireland, my question, what time of year would you suggest to go back and what and what would, oh sorry, what are the most must-see hidden spots to go visit and where to stay? Keep up the great work and live your life. So best time of year, what do you see and where do you stay? Hello, Pete, number one. Uh, he was with Richie, wasn't he? He was, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so I saw him in the videos. Um, I, I, I was actually gutted I didn't, uh, I was, because I, I, Richie actually messaged me back to one of my Instagram messages, but I was, you know, work. I would have lo- loved to meet up with him. But um, best time of year, it depends. It You know, if, if you get that, that Indian summer, as they call it, that's a great mm. time of year because it's generally quieter tourist wise. It's just like what September, isn't it? Septemberish. Yeah. Um, that's a great time of year because it's quieter. It's not too hot. It's actually lovely bike riding conditions. You know, clear skies, not too hot, good grip on the roads. Um, otherwise, probably May is generally quite good as well. May June May. is usually quite good. Yeah, right. yeah, May, okay. May, because uh, we've we've this thing is a. Uh, when leaving cert students are uh, in, which is the, you know, you're 18 years old finishing school. I don't, I don't know, just for everyone who might be from anywhere. Um, generally, there's a, there's a rule that when they're going, doing their final study and final exams, um, that is when we have the best weather. That's uh, <laughs> un- universally recognized fact. Um, we, we all have to go through that sitting in the window staring, staring out. Well, not that I studied much, but anyway, that's probably evident. Um, the... <laughs> Yeah, but May, May or September, I'm going to say. But to be honest, it, Ireland is like Scotland. The weather's so changeable. Who knows? Awesome. Um, any, any time between, yeah, <laughs> any time between May and September is when you have nice temperatures, I would say, those times. Gotcha. Um, right. was, what was the next one? Hidden hidden spots? Oh, yeah. What, what to see and where to stay. What to see? I don't think they did it. Not I, One of... The coolest little roads that I have ever done, and I love it, is um, pre-sleep. I'm not going to say like Healy Pass and stuff because a lot of people know about Healy Pass and obviously the Clarny National Park and all that. They're all fantastic roads. But pre-sleep is actually not far from Healy Pass. It's not far from Kenmare and all those beautiful spots. Um, And it's often overlooked because it's just, it's kind of out of the way, but there's an unbelievable view from the very top of pre-sleep. A little plug here, I've done a video on it. Um, Hmm. Beautiful road, beautiful road. Um, Guggen Barra, which is a national forest uh, that actually burnt burnt down. It's kind of funny, but also not funny. It's a national forest park that isn't really a forest at the moment. <laughs> but anyway, um, that Guggen Barra is also another hit. Yeah, yeah. And then to, where to stay, to be honest, outside of a city. Anywhere outside of a city can't go wrong in Ireland. All right. Well, me, pre-sleep. I'll be seeing you there. I've I've heard a few people talk about um, pre-sleep. Actually, yeah, it's definitely on the old must-do list for sure. Yeah, the view view right. from the top is beautiful. Cheers for that, Pete. Um, mate, that is all the Patreon ones. Uh, we are one hour forty minutes. Have you got time? We crack on and do 
yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we can yeah. keep going. Yeah, cool. Yeah, there weren't any on on Facebook when I last looked. I'll just have a quick refresh, but there was nothing showing up on um, Facebook. I think I, the Facebook, I posted Facebookians don't want to know about me. I, I think it's because <laughs> I don't often get. I don't always get to the Facebook questions on the podcast. And oh, I, okay. I know some people have messaged and said, well, there's no point in me leaving any comment, any questions, because you never do the Facebook ones. So maybe people have given up on that. I don't know. But I do my best, folks. But, you know, once we start getting two and a half hours in, I'm like, oh, yeah. kind of need to be. <laughs> <laughs> um, right. First off, we are now at Teapot One Insta over on Instagram. And again, I'll leave uh, Michael's socials all down below. So make sure you give him a follow. Hippodrone247. Michael, if you had to give up the Magna or the Jixar, how many people would you take down if they try to enforce it? <laughs> is, that, is that a possible decision? Magna or uh, Jixar? No. no, no. <laughs> no. no you'd, have to, you'd have to drag them from my cold, very dead hands. Like, as in, you know, you get that like death grip on things. You'd have to break my fingers to get them off. No, 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 just no. Both of those bikes... Um, I, the Magna, look, I, I remember seeing one when I was a child and from then, that, that Gen 2 Super Magna, I, I just I fell in love with them and I got the chance to buy one and I bought it and it will be mine forever. And then yeah. the S-Rad was obviously my uncle's and that, I mean, I looked I looked at that S-Rad sitting in a garage for like, I think it was like 12, 13, 14 years. Jeez. And, and then finally he said, you know what, go on, you can, you can, you can bring it back to life. And I, just because it, 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 it's been in the, even in the family so long, I know it sounds ridiculous, but no, I could never, no, I could never get rid of either of those. <laughs> are you, are you a bit handy in a rock? <laughs> so say again, <laughs> rock, R U C K, R U C K. Are you, are you handy in a rugby? fight? <laughs> oh, in a fight. <laughs> um, eh, I can handle myself. I'll say that. <laughs> it seems I, like I, it seems like everyone is doing jujitsu these days. Yeah, one of my friends just started jujitsu. Actually, I I'm more of a, a boxing, kickboxing type person. So, oh yeah, that's uh, yeah, yeah. I, I yeah, yeah. I would avoid violence as much as possible, though, because you know yourself and your bigger fella, you could seriously hurt someone, and that's not what hmm. you don't want to yeah, do. Yeah, actually. yeah, 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 yeah. I'm more of a keys in the hand windmill type of bloke. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Gets the job done. <laughs> Next one, motor <laughs> underscore ma seventy seven. Can you ask Michael why does it always rain in Mexico? Also, oh here we go. This is a chap you're talking about. Also, has he lost yeah. weight? Ready for track days? You should know what I mean because I messaged them about it. What's this all about? Lost weight for a track day. What's that all about? <laughs> so the video where I talked about crashing the jigsaw. <laughs> <laughs> I even just started thinking about this. It's just hilarious. Like how, anyway, <laughs> so there was a guy commented on it and <laughs> he said, he basically said not, not to be rude. Good thing. He started the comment with that. Cause how could you not <laughs> think this is rude? He said, um, you know, generally sports bikes are for um, fitter people, you know, because you know, that's on when you buy them, that's on the booklet, you know, you gotta be, you gotta oh, yeah, be a fit, yeah, small yeah. person. Um, yeah. And then he went on anyway to say, that's the reason I crashed it because I was a fat piece of shit. And I was, he estimated 40 to 50 kg overweight. I was like, wow. dude, if I was 40 wow. kg lighter, I'd literally be dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, uh, I remember I posted that comment up on Instagram and that's when, uh, when, when Motor messaged me and we just had a laugh about it because it was just ridiculous. And I, w I went back to that comment. I didn't, you know, I, I, I gave him a piece of my mind nicely. Um, and he actually, the funniest part was, I was like, you're off your head. I didn't crash it because I'm, now, bearing in mind, actually, the man sort of had a point because the 25-year-old collapsed rear shock did let me down because it mm. wasn't sprung for my weight or whatever else. Mm. There's a difference between something not being set up for your weight and you just being too fat for sports bikes. That's not a thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, then anyway, so I replied and said, look, you're, you're, you're ridiculous, basically. And yes, you are incredibly rude. And I'm definitely not 40 to 50 kg overweight. 
because I'd be dead. But yeah, and I did say, yeah, I could do it losing like 10 to 15 kg. I won't deny that one. You know, none of us are liars here. But um, and then the best part was he came back and tried to defend his claims. Like, no, no, it's you're wow. you are 40 kg overweight. I was like, dude, drop it. You know what I mean? Uh, but uh, it was it was it was just it was one of those comments that you get and you're like, is this person OK? Yeah. Like, yeah. Where, where is this coming from? <laughs> <laughs> if I if I, I give us some sort of retort, am I the one that's going to be in the wrong here? Not the wrong, but you know yes. what I mean? You're like, is this person actually stable? <laughs> is, it, yeah. is it fair I, I, that to, honestly to when, when I left it I was yeah I was concerned that he wasn't so I just I stopped replying because I was like nah no way is this person 100% there like this just there's something you know that that clock is cracked there's, there's something wrong <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard that one before that clock is cracked uh, my grandfather used to say it <laughs> that is genius I've never heard that before that's brilliant um, what's the why does it always rain in Mexico what's that all about well sometimes I teleport to Mexico in some videos uh huh it just happens to be raining in them and it may look very like Ireland but I assure you it's Mexico <laughs> watch the vid folks and find out uh, Kazawaki <laughs> Ask him if he's still embarrassed uh, about lose. Uh, ask him if he's still embarrassed about losing his keys while spying over a fence at some geese, and whether or not he still has trust issues because of the incident. All right, come on, you got to tell me more about this. I was going to be nice and say I like Kaz, but no, no, yeah, <laughs> no. <laughs> so <clears throat> myself and Kaz, uh, Kaz is actually uh, used to make videos. Anyway, he's kind of on pause at the moment. I'm actually currently doing some work on his bike for him. Um, he's a buddy of mine. And we, anyway, we met up to do the Gordon Bennett rally route, which we got lost and didn't really do. But, you know, we still we still had fun. Um, and we stopped at one little car park. And uh, there was, I mean, there was a full back garden full of geese. There was just loads of geese. So I stuck my head over the ditch and was looking at them while chatting to Kaz on my car though. Anyway, I walked back to the bike to find no key in my bike. I was like, yeah, where have I put my keys? You know, I couldn't possibly have lost my keys. Where would I have put them? And eventually Kaz revealed that he had in fact taken them all the while laughing at me on his own GoPro <laughs> and having a great old time. <laughs> and do I have trust issues? No, no, not with general people, but with you, Kaz, yes. <laughs> oh, with them, yes, 100%. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's always that, fun that when guy. your mates do stuff like that to you, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, it's funny because I'm currently, I currently am in possession of his bike. So, you know, just, just saying. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be messaging him tomorrow. Oh, your bike fell over in the shed. I don't know how. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Enjoy that <laughs> rear shock, Kaz. That's all we're going to say. Enjoy that rear shock. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who have we got here? Snow.bike.mike. Excellent. All these top tier guests lately is made for a mega podcast. Look forward to this one. Thank you very much, Mike. Cheers. Enjoy Canada, dude. He's posting up. Snowbike Mike is posting up some uh, cracking content at the moment. He's snowboarding around a very snowy Whistler in Canada. So good on you. Oh, I must have a look. Uh, next one, Carpin Matt. A snail is hunting you down, and if it touches you, you'll die. Wow. <laughs> it always knows where you are and is always making its way to you. What's your plan? Bloody hell, folks. Wow. Okay. So you've got a Terminator snail. If he touches you, you'll die. He always, or it always knows where you are, and it all it's always making its way to you. What's your plan to evade it? God. I didn't get a notification for this one. I have no idea. <laughs> wow. What? Is it snails or slugs melt when salt touches them? Slugs, or is it both? I think. Uh oh. I, I I don't know. You've got Google. I'm gonna I'm gonna I, yeah I'm gonna Google, <laughs> Google. I'm gonna Google it here. I'd snails, suggest if it's, I'm just gonna say snail if it's a salt. snail, then as long as you go like even remotely quicker than the snail, you'll be all right. Just keep moving. And if you're gonna have a snooze, get so far ahead of it that you can have a little snooze. No, we're sorted. We're sorted. Right. I'll create a bodysuit for us that just constantly excretes salt because Salt kills snails and slugs 
by mixing with go. the slime on their skin to create a highly saline solution. This rapidly sucks the water out of their bodies by osmosis, causing them to bubble, shrivel, and die of dehydration. Terminator this slug, is, come at me. This is why I don't think any Scotsman or Scots person has ever been killed by a snail, because we have salt on everything. We have salt on a porridge. <laughs> We have salt on our chips. We have salt on our cereal. Whoa, 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 whoa. You have salt on your porridge. Go on. Yeah. <laughs> Do you not know? I just had a life like... revelation here. No. Who puts salt in porridge? You put honey I, on I, porridge, I, you lunatic. I don't. I don't anymore. But traditionally, like a Scottish, you know what a bannock is? Have you heard of a bannock? Like no. traditionally, traditionally, um, Scots, certainly where I'm from in the Northeast, they, they sort of, a staple of the diet, like going back hundreds of years, was mm. like like an oat cake, but it's it's basically just okay. oats and water mixed with some salt, and it's cooked on right, a right, candle over the fire. So it's like a, mm-hmm. a very early oat cake, but it had salt in it, and they used to put salt in the porridge as well, just oats with salt because they didn't have sugar back in those days, and that's and water, and that that was porridge traditionally. <laughs> it's horrible. I- it's horrific. I was just going to say, but people still do this on purpose. Um, I, I would imagine that's pretty much gone. I, I know from like my days in school, primary school and very young days at the academy when you do, you know, you do stuff on history and learn about your your traditions, your local traditions. Yeah. We used to have like older people coming in and giving you talks and telling you what it was like to work on a farm in those days and that yeah. sort of generation did, but certainly, like I was born seventy six, so my parents' generation and onwards, nah, nobody, nobody puts salt. In. <laughs> no, that, that's, no one. That's we, okay. have, we have sugar was, now, so you put sugar in. Didn't you? <laughs> I was going to call social services for the entirety of Scotland there, or something like. Come on, you, there's, there's nicer things available now than salt to put in your porridge. You poor, it's just poor, me suffering making a human. Sweeping generation. That's all. <laughs> Generalization. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's okay that's what that's what we're here for but yeah basically i would just cover everything around me in salt all the time and that snail would just die okay i think i'd no. just keep moving oh well that's a good point yeah 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 just put a line of salt over it kills the snail and you can carry on with life yeah, yeah. terminator snail is dead interesting mm. question though <laughs> It is, Matt. I mean, that that that's a heck of a question. I um, that's a very interesting. I, question. I wonder how your brain works. Yeah, mm. it concerns it me is. how his brain works. <laughs> we are done with the questions posed by everybody. That's almost two hours. Bang on, right? Um, how about very we call good. it at two hours? But before we do, I've got a question for you. What's the plan? Okay. What's the plan? What's the future? Ooh, um, in an ideal world. Where do you see yourself in in five years' time? In, Not necessarily YouTube related. Um, in an ideal world, I'm gonna say not in Ireland anymore. That is Ooh. one thing. Ooh. Yeah, I'd like I'd like to move somewhere else, try somewhere else, and yeah, not even necessarily to do with YouTube, but doing more with bikes like i'd love to have one thing i love doing anyway is i love working with cncs i just like them they they, they're nice i'd love to make custom parts for bikes at some point um i'd love to yeah oh one second sorry yes okay yeah, I'll be out in a minute. <laughs> sorry, you've been summoned. Who goes over? Uh, um, sorry about that. You have to do a cut now. Um, oh, don't worry about it. <laughs> the yeah, what was I saying? Yeah, so out of Ireland, and I, I to, to be honest, I just like to work more with bikes. Um, whether it be YouTube, look, I'm, I'm, I'm not overly hopeful, say, of my chances of growing enough to ever make youtube like a full-time thing uh, it would be amazing to get there um if that was you know at the start i never thought about it and then when when i got you know slightly bigger on channels people started asking the question and I, you know then you think about it mm. and yeah i think i think i'd love to at some point if, if that was to ever happen it would be 
a, a new dream say come true not one that i always mm. had but now mm-hmm. definitely that would be that would be pretty pretty cool but to be honest i'm just going to keep doing what i'm doing um i would like to move to a country that's a bit sunnier for a while i'm not saying i'm going to stay there forever um you know you always kind of come home i suppose yeah no, i get you, and, I get you. And work more with bikes, whatever that might be, whether, you know, if, if I ever get to even, I know, maybe help out with filming them, you know, maybe something in design, maybe custom parts. I don't know. some Something more with them, I suppose. Fair enough. Good on you. I know exactly what I'll, I'll not keep you long because I know I know you've got somewhere to go now. Apologies if I've kept you too long. Um, you're grand, you're grand. Uh, I know exactly what you're saying about YouTube. It was it was never in a plan of, of mine up until literally a month or two before I actually made the leap to go. I, I never planned to go full time. Um, I'm still waiting for somebody to pinch me and, and for me to wake up, you know, for sure. Yeah. Uh, but um, yeah, don't say it's never going to happen. You know, that's my only, if you want it, that's my only advice. Uh, if you've got an idea what you want, focus on it and go for it and work at it. And, it, you know, and you, if you keep going for it, and it, there's no reason why it won't happen. Just keep going and keep going, keep going, for sure. Yeah, f- fair enough, fair enough. I, 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 and look, the thing is, I know that sounds negative in a way, but my no. way of doing things, this is going to sound terrible, right? What I do for myself is I set... I set the bar low in my own brain because uh, I don't like to be disappointed in myself. But then I, you know, I like I, I it's I don't put in any less effort for it. I just I I love making videos. That's one thing I love making videos. Mm. I love talking to people on YouTube. So I'll just keep doing what I'm doing, and I'm always trying to improve my own quality anyway. Because like I said, you never you're never really happy with it. So if that eventually leads to something bigger and better, great. I, I won't Good I won't man. say no. <laughs> Good man. I'm the opposite. I always set the bar ridiculously high and I'll never ever ever attain that level that I'll um <laughs> so I'm always trying to reach for it, you know. I'm always trying to to just to, to keep going for it and try and get better and better and who knows, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Mate, um absolute pleasure chatting with you. Michael, before we go, feel free, plug, promote, shout out, whoever you want, whatever you want, over to you. Um, Teapot one. I know you're here because it's his channel, but definitely, uh, Teapot one. I've been a fan a long time, so uh, oh, thank you very much for inviting me on. Number one, uh, it was uh, it was a surprise when I got the message. So that was that was pretty cool. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, I suppose. Look, you can you can, if you want to, you can check out my videos on YouTube. It's the Gorilla Biker. Uh, Instagram is the Gorilla Biker. Facebook's the Gorilla Biker. The main thing for me is very much YouTube. So that's where my 98% of my focus goes so that that would be what I would recommend to people to go look at but I do post on Instagram you know the extra bits smaller bits so if you want to see those yeah. um, other than that I suppose uh, yeah I look I, I will shout out because we mentioned them a few times Freeman Motorcycles and Clamel they're obviously they've been very good to me giving me bikes and also a buddy of mine Dean who does suspension and stuff if you're in Ireland or want to send him something he's uh, he's actually provably very good because he fixed my jigsaw shock uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so that was that was that was nice of him and he's uh, a funny lad yeah, he no, knows not, his not, stuff to be honest Dean he does uh, it, it, that is one thing actually I should probably warn people if you do you know give him anything to work <laughs> on it comes with a side of gentle abuse so be prepared for that <laughs> Awesome. Folks, please make sure you check out um, the Gorilla Biker on YouTube. Check it out if you do enjoy it. Give them a little bit of support there. Give them a wee follow, a like, a share, comment on the vids. It's a massive, massive help. Even just hitting that thumbs up button helps massively with YouTube. So please do if it fits. Um, Michael, thank you so much for coming on, man. I really do appreciate you coming on. Oh, thanks for having me. Very much appreciated. Absolute my pleasure, man. Absolute my pleasure. And um, like I said, I'll be coming over to Ireland. So I, I would love to meet up with you and maybe we can do some content together. Absolutely. I have several bikes you have to try out. <laughs> Beautiful. Right, you're on. Let's make sure it happens. Absolutely. I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll hold you to it now. I have to get you up on the Jixer and the Magna right. and the CBF and the right, XC250 it. if it's fixed. Let's do it. And I'll get you, I'll get you on my uh, tractor. You can get on the old yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll be another convert. Watch <laughs> this space. <laughs> we'll see. We'll All see. Right, dude. Have a, have a great night. Apologies for keeping you so long. Um, no, you're crying. You're fine. Really appreciate you're fine. your company. 
folks. No, and hope you've enjoyed. Great talking to you. Sorry, go on. No, no great talking to you. There's a wee bit of a delay. Apologies about this. No, you're fine. <laughs> folks, it's hope you've enjoyed Irish this internet. one. <laughs> folks, I hope you've enjoyed this one. Keep doing your thing. Uh, sorry, let's just go one back slightly. As I said before, if you've got anyone you'd like to see on the podcast, make sure you post up in uh, your socials or my socials. Tag me, tag them, and we'll try and make it happen. All right, folks, keep doing your thing. Look after those that you love. Get on out there whenever you can and live your life. Woo-ha! Well, I mucked the end up on there, didn't I, pal? <laughs> <laughs>